Hello, good morning, and welcome to News File. This is your most authoritative news analysis platform. And here on News File, as you know, we put Ghana first. The Airbus 5 million euros corruption or graft scandal. When will the special prosecutor lift the veil on government official one and the intermediaries? Those we are learning have bled this nation's purse in such a crude way. As you may have heard from the majority leader, then as minority leader, their suspicion was that Ghana was losing as much as $10 million on each of the planes that is sought to buy. But as other countries worldwide trigger probes, and in Sri Lanka, as people are arrested over the Airbus scandal, we want to know when will this start in Ghana? And will we enjoy some of the three billion paid out by Airbus? As you know, some excavators have vanished. They are missing. At the very start of Operation Vanguard, in excess of 600 excavators were seized. Now the stories we hear, those who are supposed to protect the situation have rather turned themselves into thieves stealing in broad daylight. The police has arrested six. Will the police be able to stop Galam Stop and Vanguard from further murders and plunder? There's a call on the president to ask his DCEs and ministers to make the same pledge he made, putting his presidency on the line. Otherwise, he should forget it. But we will start. Whilst we are losing money here and there, money that could go into the chest, we are out there in the world, and we are getting a lot of money. We are excited about it. Why should we be excited about the f almost five times, or over five times over subscribe? Eurobond. The finance minister is our special guest this morning. We'll be right back with the, to deal with the VEX matters. You're welcome back. This is News File, it's your most authoritative news analysis platform. The Bloomberg reported this week, that Ghana sold Sub-Saharan Africa's longest ever Eurobond, longest ever Eurobond, as part of a three billion deal that was almost five times oversubscribed, almost five times oversubscribed. So that has been the celebration elsewhere and back home. So despite airby scandal, Airbus scandal, there appears to be some confidence in the Ghanaian economy. But what does that mean for you and I? What does that mean for the country's debt sustainability levels? The World Bank has warned that our debt risk is still very high. So we will find out what this actually means and how it translates into your pocket, so to speak. And then the president, in his Christmas message, promised that if you were part of those who have lost your money savings in the financial institutions that went down, I mean the microfinance institutions, 
340 plus of them, you will get a full refund, not the 10,000 and the 20,000 that was being paid and has been paid. Where is that money coming from? And how far are we about that? We set up an FX development committee and it drew a lot of criticism even from experts, professors of econo e economic professors. What was that about? The finance minister co-chairs that committee with the central bank governor. He'll explain to us if that was not a sign that he's lost control over the city. Good morning. And thank you very much for joining mm -hmm. us. Good morning, Mr. Ken Samson. Furiata. It's, it's great to be here, and Happy New Year. You thank you. Yep. Yeah, good to see you also. Great. Right. So basics. Uh, start with, we went on a road show, and we have been able to raise money, three billion. What's that money for in the first place, and why are we excited about it? Um, well, something. I mean, I, I think it was um, quite an experience uh, being the um, money. Of course, was in the budget uh, because we run a budget deficit. So you raise money on the local treasury uh, market and also internationally as you balance between um, foreign exchange depreciation and the cost of, of borrowing. Mm. Um, so, so that that leads us there. Um, then you begin to, to talk about um, the response from investors um, to your, uh, your sovereign paper. And I think that's, that's what we went through this time. Remember last year, uh, we also issued um, $3 billion right. um, to some pretty rave reviews. It was a difficult period because Argentina was going down, we were exiting the IMF, and um, investors were a little nervous about that. Uh, but even with that, there was such a great show of support, um, and we got money at the lowest rates ever. Mm. Um, this time around, $3 billion, and uh, we got a $15 billion response from international capital markets, uh, which, as you rightly said, is three times uh, what we wanted, and the lowest rates in our history. Um, this was, uh, fortunately for us, Moody's had come in around January 24th. Um, given us a positive outlook, which was really very good. Um, uh, and then we, we decided to test the market um, with the longest uh, bond in Africa's history, uh, which was 41 years. And uh, amazingly, Samson, that one, we took $750 million from that. That one had an eight times over subscription, you know, which is really indicative of the confidence um, that uh, the market has in how we are managing the economy and how things are going. Mm. Um, I think one thing that uh, was really jarring, if you look at um, the sixth year um, that we had in the previous government in 2016, um, that came in at about 9.250. Um, and the sixth year um, that we launched um, this year was 6.3750. So something, imagine, let's say, a billion dollars in finance. That's about 300 basis points difference, uh, which means that every year is a $30 million saving, and that's $180 million over the period. So you just, when you just oppose it, you just see sort of how far the country or we as Ghanaians have come with regards to the market's response to what we have done these three years as a nation, and therefore the continual drop um, in the cost of capital for us. And I think in as long as, I mean, every country borrows. You know, Japan is over 100 percent, U.S., I don't know, maybe 300 percent. Um, so it's not really the issue of not borrowing. Where do you go um, to get you know, the best resources for your country at any point in time? So we got this at the cheapest rate ever in this country's borrowing history. That's correct, yeah. And that means what? Well, why? I, I gave you... I mean, why? Yeah, why? Why? why are we getting it that I don't know. I mean, I mean certainly, uh, firstly, it, it reduces your cost of capital. And mm -hmm. I gave you the example of the, of the six-year bond, 2016, and what we have now. Um, so that, that's important uh, for What us. will account for, you know, our competitiveness? Okay, that's interesting. I mean, if you look, in um, 2017, when the government came in, 
um, I think the first one to come around as they saw um, our plans and strategy for the economy uh, was, I believe, Fitch or so, um, which um, um, sort of brought us to stable. Mm. It had long in coming. Then in October 2018, uh, SMP actually upgraded us um, to a B, which was great. And then Moody's January 20. So you, you can see a belief in um, the management of the economy. And this whole thing, something is about how do you manage this economy mm. such that you build confidence in areas that will give you the resources you need. Um, so um, something, I mean, be it as it may, uh, and it's not perfect, but when you bring inflation down from 15.4 to single day of 7.9, it means something. Okay. You know, when your uh, growth uh, moves from an anemic 3.4% to literally an average of 7% over the period, that's twice or double, mm -hmm. that must mean something. Um, you look at your, your deficit and you move from um, 7.8 um, to where we are, where we have actually capped it to below 5. That means something. Yeah. Um, so that becomes an issue of market stability. Right. Um, uh, but then going forward is, is an assessment that is this sustainable, mm. you know? And but, that but is where... We also credit worthy now as we celebrate that also because of what we did with the World Bank. And um, what do you mean by what we did with the World Bank? So our, I mean the IMF, our plan was to get a certain confidence into our, our economy. Yeah. And so we, you came in and you managed very quickly to get us off. Yeah. How does that play into how we have become, as you may say, credit worthy. Yeah. I, I think, you know, you, you remember um, last year, first quarter, when um, the currency really was doing cartwheels on us uh, because the international market was worried about imminent exit from the fund. Mm. And, and uh, President Kufuadu has said, we need to get out of this. Okay. You know, so we, we committed to do that, and we rode that tide. But even then, at that April, uh, when we went to the market, uh, there was, you know, a, a positive response to it. So the fund, I mean, if you, the, the fund is very clear about um, sort of the macroeconomic um, um, strategies that we put in place mm. and are warning us about that distress. Not right. that you are distressed, mm. but warning you to be careful about that. Um, so I think, yes, being able to execute a plan right from January 2017, declaring that we'll exit the fund and doing it was mm. good. But we didn't sort of leave the fund without um, we ourselves putting certain buffers in place, uh, which was going to, to Parliament and you know, it's, um, promulgating the FRA, uh, the Financial Responsibility yeah. Act, which then will constrain us or any other government mm. within the 5% bucket and okay. also a primary balance. So, so I'll, I'll get to that particularly because yeah. we're in the election, election yeah. year and we know that but for one other election year, almost all the election years, we have we have done very poorly right. um, with keeping keeping the taps. Yeah. So the question that's actually asked, and I'm trying to also appreciate it, yeah. that we are borrowing and we are accumulating our debt, mm -hmm. and we are excited about that. How mm -hmm. do you explain that? We are borrowing. Well, first of all, we, we have to borrow uh, because um, our domestic revenues do not match that. And then borrowing on a sovereign basis is, is really global. Okay. Um, so the question is responsible borrowing is what, is what um, we, we need to affirm. Okay. Uh, and I think we are doing that. I mean, I think we are at um, 60 and, and change um, percent if you include our energy and our financial services uh, intervention. Um, you X that and you're around 58, 59 percent, okay? Mm. Uh, but I, I think the, the, the challenge really, uh, when you look at the, the Asian countries, etc., is not that you shouldn't borrow. How do you then move into an export-driven economy mm. um, such that um, our net um, international reserves coverage is not four months, but it's two years or it's three years, so that the vexing issue of currency depreciation does not occur. 
Um, but, but I think you, you, you've got it. So the, the confidence in exiting the fund, mm. um, what we have done with the macro statistics to be where we are, mm. is all leading to... Do, do to I hear you say that despite the warnings uh, by the IMF and the World Bank about our debt distress being high, no, we shouldn't about be worried? the potential debt distress. So there's yeah. no cause for worry? No, I, I think... Um, because I, mean, I think it's, we are it, doing how much now? Is it $208 billion? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think your issue is not that you should not borrow. You should borrow with care. You know? And if you look at our trade surplus, for example, you know, you've moved from a negative mm. um, to somewhere around um, $2 billion um, net. You know, those are what then will indicate your capacity um, to support that. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, your challenge is to get appropriately priced funds at the right time to be able to, for your, to do your transformation exercise, which will then generate the resources. And when you talk about quantitative easing and all of those um, um, things that other countries do, uh, it's because they need to inject certain resources into the economy mm -hmm. of the expectation that that would enhance productivity. Okay. So a while ago, you talked about how this is the cheapest, and um, analysts all over the globe uh, are saying the same thing is the cheapest that we could ever uh, we have ever had. Yeah. Um, I have we have uh, this um, uh, plot yes. that you can watch if you are watching, and thankfully, uh, uh, 25 years of excellence in broadcasting. This channel is now free, free to air. So you don't exactly need to have a Digibox or to have a DSTV <laughs> to access this. So you're watching us live. Thank you very much. And the finance minister <laughs> is my guest this morning. So to the very first question I really asked, yeah. what is this money for? Great. I mean, so, so, so what are we doing with this $3 billion? I mean, first of all, to be clear, that it was in the budget. So it's something that the nation expected. Because you go into the budget and you... You look at your revenues, you look at your domestic financing and foreign financing, so that's fine. And what we intended to do, you know, we have this issue of our energies. Uh, and we are in the middle of negotiating this um, take or pay, which is just egregious um, to the country. And we came out boldly to say that we are not going to continue mm. with these type of unbalanced contracts for our country anymore. Um, so we're going to put about a billion dollars aside to look at how um, we, we resolve um, um, those um, IPP issues, um, that's one. Um, then we use an, um, close to a billion to also look at um, um, the, uh, the various issues that have occurred in prior years um, to see whether uh, we can retire them um, so that we reduce the interest cost to us. Um, then the other billion goes um, into the budget um, to look at planting for food, et cetera, and rail development, roads, et cetera, if we've declared um, a year of roads. Mm. Um, so really nothing um, that complicated, but really targeted at resolving um, some legacy issues and um, freeing the economy um, to be more effective going forward. You're still here on News File. This is your most authoritative news analysis platform. And we start our morning with the finance minister um, asking about the Eurobond. And he's just been explaining to us um, how this is giving us some space to be able to operate and also uh, to keep the economy um, afloat. Um, so to the question of the subscription levels again, the impression created is, is that this Eurobond issuance has been dramatically successful, but there are really two yardsticks that are used in Ghana to judge the success of a Eurobond roadshow. Number one, subscription level, and number two, the yield. Subscription level can indicate the level of confidence in the economy, but only if the yield is good. The yield is the most important criterion because that determines the resources we are going to lose in servicing the loans. By these measures, 2020 February Eurobond issue, quite typical because both the subscription level and the yields are very similar, you know, curve to the 2018 one. Back to the critical question. If the yields are plotted on a curve, 
it would show that our risk profile has remained steady in the eyes of investors. So why exactly is the government celebrating it? I'm not sure about um, the, the, the premise and opinion all that you have said. Mm. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Um, I think for any um, um, average person looking at where we have come from um, to now, it will really, I'll be, hard, I'll be hard pressed um, to see how there could be any cynicism of this. Mm. Um, let's say last year, the seven year on your chart, um, was 7.875, and the six year this time is 6.375. You know, the four, 31 year was 8.9, it's now 8.75. But I think maybe what, what is important for us to celebrate is to realize that we are moving um, towards cheaper financing mm -hmm. of the country's paper. And I think that's important for all of us. And I think that uh, illustration of the 2016 six year paper and the 2026 20, year paper is just, you know, really indicative of mm. what it means mm. and when you're able to drive down that resource. Right. You know, so um, uh, I think we, we should, you know, I, I worry uh, when we, we don't um, use these indicators to encourage us, you know, to do more um, in terms of the way in which we are managing the economy. Because in the end, something. It's about the economy All right. and how so, we have handled right. it. To right, so point. back to how it translates to, to okay. us. Yes. And like I mentioned earlier, government overspent, you know, in all competitive election years, uh, 2004 okay. being the exep exemption. So you're worried about 2020. Um, what assurance can you <laughs> give have? Ghanaians that the last quarter, we are in the last quarter, in the last quarter of this year, government will keep to fiscal discipline. discipline. And more importantly, your government has posted um, average GDP growth 7%, but that is not exactly reflecting in people's pockets. Mm. What specific initiatives are you putting in place to ensure greater uh, inclusivity with this huge amount of money coming okay. at so cheap yeah. a rate? You know, I, I think um, something you are um, sort of parroting um, a lot of the popular um narrative um, that, that we have here and 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 it's it's uh, it is good to, to confront it yeah. uh, because really i i think if we all um look at where we were in 2017 and where we are now it's not i don't have to you know sort of trumpet that clearly there's been a change now what do you do um to be able to translate all of that so that uh, the uh, famed f um, phrase of people's pocket um, is, is, is managed properly. I, I have to, as a finance minister, be really focused on macro stability. You know, whether somebody is screaming, tearing me down or not, I just have to keep my eye on that and make sure it is done. Mm. And I think, you know, uh, President Akufuadu has essentially achieved that. But even during that period, he was also very clear of what he calls the preferential option for the poor, which is an issue of inclusiveness. You know, so the, the massive um, elimination of various vexing taxes and the interjection of um, free senior high school, um, what we are doing with planting for food and jobs. Now, this is not a government that is therefore um, not aware mm. of what the needs of the people are. And to be able to secure the future for transformation I mean, human capital is so important, and, and that's what the intervention is. Okay. But beyond that is creating a society where there's social inclusiveness, which means I must get educated, okay. and also there's a sense of social mobility. You know, so when I sit there looking at choices that one has to make, when somebody says, well, you don't have the money to do free senior high, I say, I don't have a choice. The president wants that, and every Ghanaian citizen deserves um, to be able to be given a platform yeah. from which he or she I'm, can... I'm still waiting to hear the assurance that we will not overspend in the election year. Well, the assurance and that you everything, have... the beauty threw everything away. Great. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad you are saying throw everything away because there is an acknowledgement that we've got a lot yes. <laughs> and we don't want to throw it away, which is very good. But, you know, we, we have an amazing team. You know, I mean, for me... Um, um, being under uh, the mentorship of the vice president, the senior minister, 
uh, you know, and the presidency. And it gives a whole sense of urgency as to what we have to, we have to do. And, and that, that is where, unfortunately, the senior minister was the one who was able to ensure mm. that we did not um, get into this election year. All and right. he's there to guide us. Mm. And we also, as you know, voluntarily did the FRA. Right. Um, so the 5%, I have to keep at it or as I lose my job, I'm sanctioned. Okay. And uh, that's motivation enough. Um, so really for us, and if you look mm. at what we have done these um, three years, we have kept faith. All right. Move that. All right. Uh, you know. So, so in, in a minute, to conclude on this subject of the Eurobond, yeah. before I go to, um, you know, microfinance uh, depositors who are waiting yeah. to hear from you that indeed they are going to get uh, their full deposit paid back to the market woman who is listening and watching us this yeah. morning, what does this $3 billion mean to her? Yeah. Well, it, it means that. If your, your child is in school, um, this program will continue. We can continue to fund it. Um, uh, if you were worried about foreign currency, you know, this helps with regards to stability. We, I mean, we, we started in 27, we didn't go to market. 2018, we went in July. Mm. 2019, we went in March, April. And now we've come in February. Which means that we are really consolidating our foreign exchange reserves so that there's stability in there. So for the market woman, I mean, certainly food prices are great. Um, uh, the children uh, can still go to school because we can pay for it. Um, NHI will continue to be better, and that's good for us. And you, um, with um, interest rates sort of gingerly coming down, that hopefully will also give access um, to bank credit, which has increased tremendously over great. that period. So we know that in the bank cleanup exercise or the financial sector cleanup exercise, we understand that so far we have spent in excess of 17, um, if my memory serves me right. And we're expecting that we are going to hit up to 20. Now, where is that budget mm. for the president's promise that there will be full payment yeah. of uh, deposits? Mm -hmm. That's not been budgeted for. Yeah. Where is that money going to come from? Um, I mean, first of all, when the president promises, we do it. And I think the magic is for the Ministry of Finance um, to conjure up the appropriate resources and time um, our d delivery of resources such that uh, we'll fulfill the promise. Um, I think, you know, it's something that we, we, I really think we as a nation need to be clear on. Um, I mean, I was much younger then, but uh, when um, Kufu's government came, I mean, we had uh, the country literally on the verge of imploding uh, because of what you called um, HIPIC, highly indebted poor country. And we have put our head in the sand pretending that it wasn't so. Mm. Okay. Um, President Kufu confronted that, and it led to uh, finding the appropriate resources and support to be able to do that. In the same way, when we came in 2017, um, um, the asset quality reviews were clear uh, from the Bank of Ghana as to where we are with our banking system. But the courage to, to make that decision uh, had not really been invoked. And we went ahead to do it. So we had to do it. Mm. Okay? Um, so the question is, um, well, is it the most effective way that should have been done? I'm not sure there's any other way, but everything can be perfected of some sort. Given the resources that we had, um, uh, we then went ahead to spend what some 12 billion or so after the 10,000 and the 20,000. Uh, President feels very strongly um, that we should move forward um, to now close that gap. Um, and so between the Bank of Ghana uh, and ourselves, we are going to do that. I had some extra. Uh, $180 million at the Bank of Ghana that I, I, you know, we hadn't touched. Um, and I think w we need about $3 billion, um, to do that. $3 um, billion? Dollars? Yeah, $3 okay. billion, no, no, Ghana CDs. Ghana CDs. To be able to close there's, there's the gap. There's some speculation yeah. elsewhere that in, in the end, we might need up to $28 billion Ghana CDs. I mean, I, I think, yeah, I mean, speculation, you know, mm. I, can, I can live on speculation. Okay, but, but what, what is your assessment that's, because I mean, before, right now before you make the decision yeah. that you're going to make full payments of the deposits, mm -hmm. you would 
have made an assessment to know how much exactly yeah. is sustained? Well, right now, our assessment, I, I think we have about 16.28 billion. Uh, we've done about 12, so we have about 4 billion um, CDs that, that we have to do. Um, you know, uh, we'll see. And with that, as I mentioned, I have um, maybe a billion CDs somewhere. Mm. And then I can also add um, some paper um, to that. And these and payments be will be that. made in full as promised by the president and he directed you to ensure it is done. This will be done so this year. I don't know what the president has promised that has not happened. You know, we'll this, get out this of will the happen IMF this year. It has to. Everybody will get their money. It has to happen. You know, it's a, it's a tall task, isn't it? But it, it leads to our also realization of how we should be more circumspect as a country, as mm. investors, as individuals. Uh, and that's just a painful lesson. But, but what's, what's the wisdom in that? That I deposit my money with a private institution and they, I lose my money with that private institution because of, you know, uh, some reckless acts of that institution, perhaps. And then the taxpayer's money is being used to the relieve. Tax, yeah. The, the taxpayer... What, what's the wisdom in that, making sure everybody yeah, gets 100%? I'm sure, I mean, I don't know, I mean, Samson. The taxpayer is also the person who deposited their money. Is that right? Maybe. I mean, they, they are not different people, Maybe. really. You yes. know? And, and so it goes to say... But, you know, you, you run a country and there's, um, uh, you want cohesion and, and you want a sense of peace and, um, and people to go about their duties. And therefore, if a government has licensed an institution to do X, Y, and Z, uh, then that institution has to deliver. The issue is that, I mean, this is not the first banking crisis in the world, you know, but you need to come through. Um, so the deposit insurance um, system has not been put in place, mm. so you know your limits. Mm. Um, we need to go after uh, people at the Bank of Ghana who participated in this. I mean, fortunately for us that um, that moral issue is being resolved. I mean, in the past three weeks, you've seen an escalation of that, so mm. that's wonderful. Um, so things will go wrong. How do you then um, bring some equanimity and ensure that people can go about their normal duties? So it will be unfair, but, you know, um, you provide um, security sometimes to certain places you don't. Is, is, there, is there a specific timetable that the depositors can look up to? Yes, I mean, um, I think we and Bank of Ghana are almost close to the decision as to when we will trigger it. Um, but the assurance really is that we have um, some cash that we can use and we have some instruments that we'll bundle together to, to make that happen. We need to pack that behind us and, and move forward and, and people feel a sense of security that when a government uh, declares something or when a government manages something, it is done well. The usual thing is that, the normal is that, whilst they were being paid about 10,000 10, or 20,000, then the receiver will get into action and seek to recover. That's correct. Uh, and realize the assets of these uh, defunct entities. That's and correct. And that money will be used to pay uh, depositors. Yeah. So, so what, what we are doing then, I mean, given that theory, is that we are now front-ending okay. and saying that, okay, maybe we have um, the capacity mm. um, to wait a little longer than the individual. Right. And really, that's what and the presidency is saying. I'm sure um, that depositors will be very excited listening to you and watching you this morning uh, give this assurance that uh, at all costs, they are going to receive their deposits in full, locked yeah. up in this microfinance mm. Uh, entities. Uh, and my very final one will be about the FX Development Committee that was set up. And you co-chaired that with the uh, governor of the Bank of Ghana. Yeah. Um, what do you make of the criticism that came out of it to show that you've actually lost your, your, your handle on the, on the, on the city? Um, and therefore, yeah. you know, you were at your yeah. wit's end. And this was not the best way to do it. You should have left it to the Bank of Ghana because that's their job. Hmm. I mean, I think we should be very careful about language um, to, to look at where the economy is going and for somebody to declare you at your wit's end. It, you know, it's just such an exaggeration and it's not fair um, to ourselves as a people. Mm. And I think we really need to mind our language. Um, so, so, so where are we? Uh, the Bank of Ghana um, looks at the depreciation of the CD, sort of the short-term issues, 
and I sit at the Ministry of Finance looking at once again managing the economy uh, into the future. So I, I'm, I'm looking and saying, you know, this perennial three, four month cover, which is really good, you know, for a country of art, why shouldn't I have a two year cover? You know, why, why is this impossible? I mean, countries have it. And so then I'm like, okay, so that means an export and industrialization drive, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, so, and how do I turn uh, my traders uh, into manufacturers? Because if that trader, Cantamanto, is able to go to Dubai, China, etc., to then bring goods in, the intellect and entrepreneurial skills are there. So is there any way in which I can find resources to turn these people into manufacturers? I think that's a question that I have to ask mm. that I think I need to address. Mm. Uh, is there a way of re-examining the retention um, of proceeds that uh, miners, etc., bring? I think that's a question I have to ask okay. and, and, and get an answer to. If I look at the Continental Free Trade Agreement and see now the potential for trade and investment, should I not examine that? Be because these are structural, okay? Um, how do I... Um, take advantage of the 375 million consumers in, in West Africa and even Nigeria as a market. I do need to question it. Uh, maybe my, my, my only um, mistake was to have broadened you know, it, uh, but it's not in any way infringing on what the governor does. And, and this was a committee which then was going to report um, to the EPCC, which I chaired by us. Um, so I, I think there's quite a bit of mischief in there. There's an economic so, uh, policy coordinating committee. Coordinating committee. Okay. Um, right. so, so, I mean, um, something, when, when you look at that, yeah. shouldn't somebody be thinking of the structural, you know, changes that we need for transformation? Okay. And, and that really, so maybe I should have come out to, to explain it a little bit more. So I listened mm -hmm. um, to the various views on it. I'm like saying, you know, guys, you know, let's get serious about what our future is and um, okay. change the way in which we There's a lot the that uh, we could uh, ask you about as yeah. far as the health of the economy is concerned. Yeah. But thank you very much for availing yourself and answering uh, these questions okay. um, for our audiences, particularly uh, the microfinance uh, depositors That's who okay. will be so excited mm -hmm. about the assurances that you give. Uh, yeah. You are give, you're giving, except that your critics and the political divide will say this is only because of the election year and it's a vote buying uh, sort of you know agenda well I, you know i'm not sure about that you know i mean uh, um, actually uh, when we were launching um, the bond issue and um, i'm like okay so what's going to happen um, so i asked one of the um, ad um, advisors uh, to read isa 4319 which says that you know see I'm doing a new thing and do we not see it you know and that should be a good um, note on which we uh, end this discussion this morning thank you very much sir thank you appreciate All right. it okay All right so we will be right back and we will be uh, airborne on an airbus looking for a government official one and intermediaries five eight name them Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. You're welcome back. This is Newsfile. It's your most authoritative news analysis platform. And here on Newsfile, we put Ghana first. So my guest to look at the issues of... Um, the excavators that are missing and the stories that are coming up very bizarre, messy, murky on the Galamse fight, as well as the Airbus scandal. Bobby Banson, he's a lawyer and teaches the law as well. Thank you for joining us, Bobby. Right. Thank you for having Dr. me. Dr. Justice Youngson is General Secretary of the Ghana Medical Association. He's also a lawyer. And Martin Pebble is a lawyer. 
And as you know, he filed a, an RTR request. And he got people <laughs> to be calling me and asking me to explain further. How did he understand them? I said, why? It's Martin who has filed an RTR request. <laughs> why are you on behalf of your clients? Why are you calling me? <laughs> You're a champion of it. Yeah, you guys fought right. well mm -hmm. over all those years to get yeah. it passed. Right. So. Right. But because of the law, mm -hmm. um, people just have to go ahead and do it by themselves. They don't have to come and worry as lawyers to but lead them to do it. you understand it a lot more. I almost right. even called you. I said right. that we didn't have time at the time. <laughs> Especially right. in the initial stages. Yes, right. you need guidance. Exactly. Right. Once they I'm sure like right. you are training people on the law. Yes, right? we have, so we have done right. a couple of things around the country, and uh -huh. uh, we also... I also do it on my show here. Uh -huh. Right. So, so thank you very much. So let's get to Airbus. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, this show is brought to you by the candidate sponsorship of MTN. Everywhere you go, Star Assurance, your solid partner, Bank of Africa, strong as a group, and close as a partner, Amen Scientific. God is the healer. And Dura Plus, wherever you go, wherever Dura, Dura Plus goes, water will flow. So wherever you are, Water will come to you because there is Dura Plast. Now, as you already know, in the course of this week, one issue, two issues have dominated the headlines. But one which appears to be the biggest is about investigations that have led to deferred, deferred um, prosecution agreements in the US, in the UK, in France, and people getting to benefit all over those countries as a result of that, and probes having been triggered in various countries where Airbus is found to have misconducted itself by literally bribing people to get to be able to sell some of its military aircrafts. <clears throat> Ghana was one of them, and a number of issues have come up. Let's quickly uh, listen to the responses that came from persons like Vita Sazim, anti-corruption campaigner, among other parties that felt they are directly involved and needed to react somewhat. And then we'll come back to the studio. My guests will have their take. More importantly, we are asking, when will the special prosecutor remove the veil on government officials, one, and the intermediaries involved. Well, it's good news that the president has acted so promptly, as we have been calling for him to act in similar cases involving his own, his own uh, officials. But, but it's interesting. Friday came out, and Sunday uh, there was this instruction to the Office of Special Prosecutor. It is good news. Let's hope that the, the Special Prosecutor would take up the, the challenge and come out with findings that will help us to identify the people involved, find out whether there's any loss to the state, and whether such, such a loss, if there's this, can be recovered, and, and all that. You said it sounds interesting that the president immediately referred this to the Office of Special Prosecutor. Uh, are you suggesting then that in other cases of corruption, he could have acted as swiftly? Yes, I think that that should be, that's what we normally expect of him, as uh, the president that has promised to curb corruption. So every other thing, if he does that, it will be very nice. Which other cases of corruption do you feel that he didn't act as quickly as he should? Oh, but you know a lot of them, we have to, the people have to put pressure uh, to, on, on him before he comes out. And even when the report comes out, it is not made public and, and all that. I, you, you and I, you, you, these are things that are in the public domain. Uh, the, let's say the Australia visa saga, let's say the boss case. The, the Ghana Maritime case, it takes some time before he suddenly decides that an investigation should be conducted. <clears throat> so it's not a new thing. But Mr. Martin Amidu himself is quite conflicted because, I say so because, between 2009 till January 2012, Mr. Martin Amidu was part of that government. And in fact, at some point, between 2010, January 2010 and January 2011, Mr. Martin Amidu was our Minister for the Interior. And by our constitution, he served on the Council of the Ghana Armed Forces. So it will be interesting to find out, does he know about it? I, I mean, in terms of the procurement, that, I'm talking about 2010. And before the 2010, 
if I'm right, I think he served as an advisor um, in the office of the president. Right. So what does he know about it? And then after leaving as minister for interior, he became the attorney general and minister for justice. I think in government contracts and in gov big government procurement involving international bodies, certainly the attorney general must have some knowledge. And so I, 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 based on these, I would say that perhaps Martin himself is conflicted in this matter until perhaps he makes it clear that, yes, he was in government at the time, held key positions, including being on the Ghana Armed Forces Council, but was not privy to a decision to acquire aircraft for our military. And mm. I think that we need to, we need to push that angle to, 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 for Martin to uh, be clear on that so that, you know, uh, he doesn't commence an investigation that on a matter that he ought to have known or ought to have been privy to and, and, and bring us conclusions that some, maybe people would not be clear about whether or I mean, how it was conducted and whether his, his interest Play the role in one way or the other. suspicion are now going in 2011 away at home press conference. Ah, now free say it was the sitting president then, John Mahama. No, so our suspicion and say, sign. It's a sign. You still think say it's him? <laughs> well, say we are both these uh, elected government officials. Yes. So, in my own estimation, it confirms a dear not yet. Don't forget, I, I, President Mahama. On one because who he offend say. Uh, he was the luckiest vice president yeah. about those things that are on the present money because the STS arrangement is me or Cassette Yanko Korea and Yanko. What I say, STS say, many in the Koye in Yakutu. Yako no agreement now. Amadi a man, you know, the draft agreement may be Sibasapa to be famous because I'm so near calling the Quasi name Nima de Cocray. Airport. I don't know who's over STS at the end of the day. I don't know. 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 So, Yako Korea, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't All right. So, you heard the majority leader in parliament, who was then minority leader at the time this uh, business came up in Parliament, but you had also um, Suleimana uh, Brahima, who says that it is not difficult at all to be able to project and tell exactly who individual uh, government official one is, among others. And you had Vitus Azim also thanking the president for being that swift, very, really very swift in asking the special prosecutor to get into the matter. He wishes and prays that that will be the template for all other matters that come up. So, um, so Bobby, I'm sure that you have gone over these processes from the UK and from the US. And I was just telling Justice Youngson a while ago that, and, and Martin Pebu that, <laughs> I was attempting a summary that would be so crisp mm -hmm. that I can share with the public. And by the time I realize, <laughs> I have five pages. <laughs> five pages. <laughs> and that doesn't seem enough. <laughs> from, from your reading mm -hmm. of these particular two mm -hmm. deferred judgments uh, that we have become uh, familiar with, what sticks out for you? Well, um, I... I took more time to read the U.S. judgment because right. I felt it was more detailed yeah. than the, yeah. the Sadek district mm -hmm. court. It's a decision. bit straightforward yeah, too. Straightforward, yeah. let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. So from my understanding of it, um, it states that between, it started from 2009. When, when um, the U.K. says intermediary five is a close relative, mm -hmm. they will say it's a right. brother of government official one. So, so they, they were very yeah, yeah, quite straightforward. straight to the point. And they, they, they stated, it came out clearly, that the initial contact was with government official one mm -hmm. and Airbus. Yeah. They stated very clearly. Mm. And they said that the government official one is a person known to the US state. 
So let's let's it let it not be as if somebody brought the deal to government official one, whoever it is. Mm -hmm. It is he was the direct contact right from the onset mm. with Airbus. Now my brief summary of the sequence of events, mm. if I may call it that way, mm. was that government official one starts dealing directly with Airbus official about the possibility of Ghana government purchasing these military aircraft. Mm. Somewhere along, along the right, line. Right upon assumption of office. office. A, few, a few months. Mm. Is it a few months? A few mm. days. Because I said January. Two yeah. thousand January. Ah, so mm. December. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Days, weeks. January yeah. 7 and then, uh -huh. okay. Mm. So somewhere along the line, government official one says, okay, I cannot directly deal with this. Mm. I'll give you somebody who would be the go-to or go-between mm -hmm. us. Now, this person is described as a brother of government official one. I think he's described as individual five in the U.S. report. That's right. But intermediary five in the uh, U.K. Uh, for the purpose of our discussion, I'll call the person number five. Yes. <laughs> That's, uh, That's okay. easier. Yeah. That's easier, yeah. number five. Yeah. So number five goes to incorporate a company, mm -hmm. the purpose of which will serve as an agency. Mm -hmm. let, let me use layman's language. Right. That would sign an agreement with Airbus to procure a business contract for mm -hmm. Airbus in Ghana mm -hmm. on commission basis. Mm -hmm. Airbus, because of its uh, uh, um, uh, seat of incorporation mm -hmm. in UK, Germany, France, mm -hmm. they would have to comply with this OECD mm -hmm. convention mm -hmm. on bribery mm -hmm. and corruption, anti-bribery and anti-corruption. Anti right. By that, you must submit all your agreements to these internal checks. Now, the commission agreement, I think it was 5%, somewhere along it's the line. Yeah, it's 5%. 5%. Mm -hmm. yes. it's, it's a, yes, and so you must submit it to your internal checks. Mm -hmm. The internal checks says, bring me the incorporation documents of this agent, mm -hmm. agency, the company. Mm -hmm. Then they realize that the shareholder or directors mm -hmm. are closely related mm -hmm. to ha government elected officials who are in high place positions. They said no. And we included number five. Yes. Yes. So number five is a shareholder of mm. this company. Yeah. They said no, you cannot have this transaction with this company as an agent mm. because then you will not meet that test. Mm. They said, okay, wait. We have a Spanish company mm -hmm. that can be a small screen. Mm -hmm. Let us use that Spanish company as an agent. But the commission will end up in the hands of this intermediary five. And by extension, government official one. So for me, that is how this went around. Okay. So the, the, the transaction was done, and the American judgment states categorically was that the purpose was to influence the decision-making process. Mm -hmm. And so there is no doubt about it, that it was an attempt to pay money mm -hmm. to secure a contract which may ordinarily mm -hmm. have not been secured. Mm -hmm. But for this payment of money. So it was to induce... The, the contract, right. the, the execution of the contract. Mm. So clearly, if not that there was a crime, there was an attempt at a crime, which is equally punishable under our laws, right. clearly. Mm. Now, if we ask to who government official one is, it's up in the air. We mm. can all <laughs> seem to. But, but the interesting thing is that I, I was discussing with a senior. It's up in the air as in... You know, but in your head, you can. That say is what it. I'm saying. Because these are, if you are not careful, you may go into the realm of defamation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if it turns out that the person we su you suspect, mm -hmm. and you come out to say, as for politicians mm -hmm. on their political platforms, Excellent. they are allowed to say yeah. whoever they think it is, and mm -hmm. they may, you know, walk away and bring up. But with us mm -hmm. as professionals, mm -hmm. you cannot sit on a platform like yours mm -hmm. and say categorically that I know yeah. it is this person. Remember, the circumstantial evidence rule is that mm. the facts must lead to one and only one irresistible conclusion. And even if it did, you still can't yeah. That is what I'm saying. But <laughs> in, even in the contest, we did not have only one government official. But, but be, let's be careful. Before you suggest that politicians are immune from civil suits by way of defamation oh, no, no. if they, they defame not. somebody. But they, when they are okay. sued, they mm. find a way of having it. They will it's said on a political platform. They find a way of having it sorted anyway. But, but that's, we, we but that's not a defense. You know, it's not a defense. Okay. We will not take that risk. Mm. We will not take that okay. risk. Because you cannot say that the, between 2009 and 2015, we had only one government official elected, highly placed, who had a brother 
who is a UK citizen. We cannot make that conclusive. I mean, you can guess, but you cannot say it unless the investigators have come out to say this is the person we were referring to. So we will leave it as it is. Do I hear you say that you have your doubts as to who these individuals are, particularly government official one and intermediary five? Something, if they are found or before it's concluded that, okay, if they are found that they have been involved in this, whoever it is, it will be a criminal offense. Right. And the standard of proving criminal offense is beyond all reasonable doubt. As it stands now, I would have doubt. Like I said, the basis of my doubt would be that we did not have only one elected government official. We had several of them. And I will not say that it was only one who had a brother who was of UK nationality. I will not. I'm sure if we dig, we would have like five or six. So as it stands now. Are you sure about that? Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you, you can have. I just will not <laughs> be pushed to that and say mm. it's only one person. Mm. Now, the, 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 the interesting aspect for me is whether or not we have enough basis instead of going, reinventing the wheel, doing the investigation from scratch, mm -hmm. approaching the United States, United Kingdom and France to say, give us what you have. That would be the basis of prima facie case. Okay. Invite these people. Because I'm sure that they, because these investigations have been ongoing for four years. Mm -hmm. And so before they came out with this, it means that they would have confronted Airbus officials and said, we have this evidence. They could not have denied it. All right. I'm sure there will be exchange of written communication, mm -hmm. evidence of payment transfers, right. all of that, mm -hmm. which have not been put in the judgment. Of, of course, they, they, they speak about intermediary five being put on email correspondences mm -hmm. With to which in, uh, government official one, one was, was also aware mm -hmm. as far as the transaction or the correspondence between mm -hmm. Airbus officials and these two individuals yes, were concerned. Are concerned. So right. these people would have So had, they have them. They have them. Yes, because if you look, they talk about the body of evidence that they have gone through, mm -hmm. which is in the millions, yes. about 30 three, million. 30 million. Yeah, yeah. 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 30 that's million. That instead of us reinventing... But that's a reason. lot of work. Yes. It is. Over they have to years. comb through yes. so 30 digital, million plus of yeah, documentation. Mm. Yeah, you, you can do a digital yeah. search. Mm. Okay. The judge actually spoke about it, how they had to uh -huh. work so it we around. Should be, we should be getting okay, there. Yes. So, so <laughs> if, and I was discussing with Senior Table, this OECD convention on anti-bribery and corruption, mm. which gives the countries that are signatory to it the opportunity to share such information. Mm. Ghana is not a signatory. Okay. If we were, we could have taken advantage of it and said we are investigating public officials mm -hmm. in this country right. because under com uh, criminal mm. act, act okay. if you're a public official, whether you commit government official, whether you commit the offense in Ghana or outside Ghana, you are subject to prosecution within you know, the jurisdiction of Ghana. Yeah. So they could have approached these countries and said, give us that information. But as it stands now, I'm thinking through the legal basis that we can ask, apart from diplomatic committee mm. between countries. Hold it on there. Let me go to, let me go yeah. to um, uh, Martin on yeah. that and find out whether in this specific area, before yeah. you go to your, your understanding of the facts yeah. too, yeah. is it really a difficulty... Mm -hmm. And how does mm -hmm. our, as it were, legal assistance framework mm -hmm. come in? Yes, perfect. So we have a law, thankfully, on uh, this subject, the mm -hmm. Mutual Legal Assistance Assistant. Act. Mm -hmm. Yes, so under it, the government can request for assistance from the UK authorities, and it would readily furnish. And in actual fact, even before this particular one, under the Evidence Act, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Previously, you remember the case of uh, Appear, Appear versus the Republic. Yes, 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 yes. Even that one, we did it under the uh, Criminal Offences Act. In the UK, uh, this in Barclays Bank, were required. That's Appear was a mm -hmm. former special prosecutor, mm -hmm. and uh, he uh, was alleged to have taken money. Yes, the Barclays Bank had to bring the evidence out. So as for us getting evidence from the UK authorities, it, it, it's not the much. US. I'm well. talking about US, US, and right. it would apply to mm -hmm. the US. Mm -hmm. So, so what you mean then is that. It's only a matter of time. Excellent. The special prosecutor has a basis, Excellent. a legal basis, Excellent. by which he can be furnished yes. with the information. 
because the information that the judge was privy to yeah. has the names. Yeah. It is what has been put out yeah. that the laws in that country prohibit them from putting out the names. Excellent. Okay. Yes. So, Sam, and that is where I think that maybe we should spend more time. So far, you see that we've been interested in the conspiracy theories yeah. far more than reaching out to Mr. Amidu to find out what he's doing. Because, mm. you know, so far, Mr. Amidu's uh, uh, this is support and the euphoria we, we all had on his appointment mm. has fast dwindled. Mm. So, this one is a make or break for him, mm. please. So, I think that we should rather throw the searchlight on help that Mr. Amidu needs to be able to finish this investigation quickly because people's reputation is at stake. And also, even apart from that, as Ghanaians, we are also curious, you know, now that, you know, the conspiracies are all over, <laughs> official one, intermediary five and all that. So I think we should spend more time, you know, because since Mr. Amidu took office, you know, he's had some time. And I certainly respect, you may say it's not that much, but at least by this time, apart from, Mama, you a uh, botched trial. We haven't seen much. <laughs> so let's ask him whether he's seen it. The last time I knew, they were giving him a nine-story building, right? He's had the legislation for uh, the subsidiary legislation, LI, for mm -hmm. his employees and all. What else? You see, so that let's throw the searchlight. Let your reporters go. Has he received a letter from the presidency? Has he already written to the UK authorities? First one to the Mutual Legal Assistance Act. And even, as I said, even before it, we had the evidence at mm. uh, and then, uh, the Act 30. They mm. did appear under Act 30 okay. and all that. Mm. So that we would quicken up. Because I see that we are all very anxious to find out who these persons are, you know. So that is what I make of it. Mm. What is your summary of the facts? And I'm doing this deliberately so you, you project your summaries for... Our audiences mm -hmm. to hear them from you okay. at first hand. Okay. What you also say about this whole thing. Okay. Mm. Yes. So what is salient uh, from what I gathered from the Southworth uh, this uh, judgment, mm. uh, Dame Victoria Sharp. So she says that well, from all the evidence that she had, and this on the twenty eighth of January. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Before the 28th, about two, three days earlier, mm -hmm. the judge had heard them in private yes. that they intended to have a deferred judgment because they were seeking to have a settlement. Excellent. Right. Yeah. And then on this day, the 28th, mm -hmm. then they go in open court. Yes. And then because the, the, the rules compel the judge mm -hmm. to come to open court yes. and to say what has been arrived at, yes. but without disclosing the identities yes. of the people. Yes. And he gives a number, a number of reasons, yes. including that it is not to prejudice because there are ongoing criminal processes right. and investigations yeah. in the countries affected, yeah. including countries where mm -hmm. the <laughs> death penalty <laughs> yes. is yes. what you will suffer mm -hmm. for yes. uh, engaging in that kind of corrupt, yeah. corrupt act. Yeah. So it's not fair yeah. to, you might get someone killed before <laughs> they exactly. know it. Exactly, yeah. exactly, even before they get the opportunity mm. to defend themselves. Right. Yes. Okay, and the judgment itself is dated 31st. Uh, January 2020. All right. All right. right. So, um, says that to cut to the chase, that intermediary five, okay, was the agent, having applied and they approved and all that. But when the process went through to the Airbus uh, compliance unit, they saw that no, intermediary five is close to official one, government official one. So, they couldn't deal with it. That business it was, partner. Yes, it was certainly going to be a breach of their ethics rules and all that. So then they got a Spanish subsidiary of uh, Airbus. Okay, they would do their transaction, and then they also had an agent, most specifically an agent who had been approved, who had passed the due diligence test, but had never done work in Ghana. You see, it had never done work in Ghana, but had passed the subsidiary works within this area. So they said, okay, let's allow intermediary eight to do the work, okay? So he would uh, formally be on it, but we all know that intermediary five will continue to play uh, his role, okay? Yes, and then the Spanish subsidiary signed the agreement with the government of Ghana. So it wasn't the parent company Airbus that signed. Mm. Good. Now, in this, even though the payments were supposed to, uh, the OECD, uh, this, what, a limit of five million, 
was supposed to be observed. 5%, sorry. 5%. 5%. 5%, 5%. So, mean that don't pay more than 5% to an agent. As commission. As commission to an agent. Eventually, they paid more than. So, they said they paid intermediary five, about 3.5 million euros. 3.5 million mm -hmm. euros. Out and of which the subsidiary, you know, uh, Spanish company mm -hmm. withheld what would be its own. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Almost close to uh, 200,000. Okay. Okay. Great. So a larger chunk of it went to Intermediary 5's company. The, that's company D. And you know, subsequently Intermediary 5 and his company even came for more. They wanted, they said they were owed another 1.5 million. Mm. But that was when the plugs were pulled. So that, that payment wasn't made because by then, you know, Airbus uh, had been trying to, one of the subsidiaries had been trying to seek funding from the UK export finance. And as part of that, they had to do due diligence. And you know, that was actually the basis, that was the genesis of the whole thing. It was that due diligence they were trying to scale, mm. which annexed these things. Because the UK export finance, when they saw it, they, said, they told Airbus that, look, no, 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 no. We've seen these suspicious acts of corruption, and we are obliged to report mm. okay, to the SFO. Right. And then they pulled Airbus along, mm. you see. So for us, to the extent that 3.5 million euro was paid, okay, as, as, as a result of the, trans, the Ghanaian transaction, mm. it means that we as Ghanaians, as a state, we are affected. Because number one, the business was secured. Because the payments were made, they say, in July 2011. Okay, that was where the first payment was made. So they say between July 2011 and sometime in 2015, various payments were made. Mm. And we're holding Airbus for failing to prevent persons close to them from making the payments, mm. these payments in breach of the laws. All okay, right. so looking at it, it means that definitely as a state, since we've been, uh, we've been caught in this uh, web, we are interested in finding out apart from the identities of the intermediary five and also official one, the question we should be, and I'm sure Mr. Amidu will be looking at is that, as a result of these bribery payments, did we pay more than we should have paid for the aircraft? Mm -hmm. That's very, very critical for us. Mm -hmm. Do we pay more than we should ordinarily have paid for the aircraft? The suggestion by Chairman Sabunsu is that it would have been inflated by up to $10 million uh, each. I heard it. You know, I, where we are now, naturally, I, I mean, I'll be very dishonest if I didn't say that. I also have suspicions that there will be inflation. Mm -hmm. But as we've already stated, uh, what we are expecting is that Mr. Amidu would uncover. Mm -hmm. If Mr. Amidu doesn't have expertise on... But, but is well, that logical or it is not? It is. That Airbus will not it's be not selling to you and make a loss. Excellent. So what they would have to give to you, Excellent. if it is more than the 5% that they are supposed to do, Excellent. they would include it in the price. That's it. That's it. Okay. That's it. So it's logical. To like the proverbial 10% that. that contractors are said to get yes. when they get their contracts. Yes. So if the price of the contract is supposed, in, in fact, yeah. is supposed to be, say, $5 million, yeah. and the politician who is leading to give you the contract needs you to give him some two million, yes. they will add it to it yes. and it will become seven million. Yes. Inflated, All right. grossly mm. inflated. You know the ten percent didn't start to there. You know, <laughs> Kwame Kumar's <laughs> time, the ten percent was actually being taken to fund the CPP. Okay. It was official well, mm. well, close official policy. Mm. Okay. Secret though. Okay. It was after his overthrow that all these things came. All out. right. Right. So yes. So we will pursue how Ghana should also begin to do things because we we'll look at what is happening across the globe where particular countries have been involved. And in Sri Lanka, the news is out that the Airbus you know, chief, who uh, was at the helm at the time, already has been picked up. Um, yes, yeah, so just as briefly, how do you also uh, summarize your understanding of the documents that you have been reading? OK, L looking at the two judgments, mm. it, it is very clear that as far as those courts are concerned, or those investigative bodies are concerned. Right. They are talking about bribery and corruption. That's right. It is not just, in quote, commissions paid to people. And the charges that were preferred against those involved, Airbus, the IE Airbus, and then the counts that were given. Mm. If you look at the British one, for example, 
it was premised on Section 7 of the Bribery Act 2010. Right. So clearly here we are talking about bribery as far as this investigation And that specifically is failure of a commercial organization to prevent bribery. Yes. So Airbus was on the hot seat because it failed to prevent bribery. bribery. And that, in, in that respect, technically breaches the law, as we are saying, Section mm. 7. Mm. The OECD bits were also in there as well. Mm. And Airbus has accepted yes. that, yes, we have broken these things. Right. The rules are spelled out. So technically, they have accepted that they have engaged in bribery. And that is why they've entered into the DPA. Now, the DPA, the Deferred Prosecution Agreement, it's a creature of law, and it is meant for organizations only, both incorporated and unincorporated. It does not involve individuals, or it does not cover individuals. Mm. So if you read the, the judgments carefully, you realize that the judges are saying that, for example, names of individuals were not disclosed because further investigations are currently ongoing in respect of individuals. So these individuals, both in the jurisdiction of the UK and abroad, and that could even involve our own government official one. It's possible because they said for the individuals, it is still ongoing. And the court said the judge is privy to the names and identities of all individuals or all suspects. But for the purposes of the judgment and the DPA, she will not mention the names because one, that will prejudice potential criminal proceedings mm. going forward. Okay. So it's possible that those in the UK and those outside, depending on how these countries take the processes going forward, beyond the airbags, right. these people will also be subject to further criminal prosecution. All right. Interesting. But, um, so, Bobby, what's your understanding from reading from the UK's decision, the Deferred Prosecution Agreement, DPA, is clearly a vehicle for which those who have agreed that they are guilty and are going to pay the three billion, they have 30 days to make good of that. Does it mean that by 30 days, if they don't fulfill the terms from your reading of the judgment, it means that there could actually be a prosecution? Yeah. I think that that was my understanding as well. Yeah. Right. In some instances, too, they had three months. I mean, for various thresholds. Yeah. Right. Uh, they, for example, they asked for um, a change of their structure. And mm -hmm. I read on the Airbus website that they had actually started that process okay. of restructuring their agency relationships and all of that. So okay. definitely, if they do not fulfill those requirements within those days, mm. then of course those who are responsible will be taken to the, the full persecution will go on. But for them to sign this, mm. it means that you have admitted your guilt. Right. And so it will be a matter of sentencing, mm. I, I, I suppose. And that is something that perhaps in our criminal jurisprudence, we may also look at adopting in situations that are very uh, 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 ripe for such kind of... Why, why, why don't we have already Section 35 of the Cross Act? where you do what is, we have now decided to name clearly in the OSP Act as plea bargain. Yes. Is, is, does it not look like that? No, but where you go, you say, I'm guilty, I'll pay back, and then I'll pay restoration or whatever it is, but they'll convict you, but you don't go to jail. Yes, but this, I think, is on a quite a different scale. Right. Need more the detailed guidelines. Guidelines, yes. like yes. the way it's been set out. Mm. So for instance, for instance, without any form of prejudice, in some of the charges that have been laid against people who were involved in this banking crisis. Right. If, if, in the event that they are found guilty, you know, that is very detailed. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it's the government of Ghana and the taxpayers' money that has gone down the drain mm -hmm. in such huge volumes. Mm -hmm. So there could be that sort of arrangement, that kind of thing. And it's, 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 very, it's very interesting how they've decided to go about it. At mm -hmm. the end of the day, you will notice, and maybe this could be discussed later, that the, the, the three countries, I don't know whether it's, it's the three countries mm -hmm. that are entitled to the three billion 
euros yes, compensation. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Yes, yes. And I was discussing with Senior Table that none of these countries mm -hmm. suffered financially for what has gone on. Okay. It was a breach of their laws, mm -hmm. but they did not suffer financial loss. Right. Mm -hmm. The Sri Lanka, Vietnam, China, Taiwan, Ghana, mm -hmm. we have suffered financial loss. Mm -hmm. And yet we are sitting down not finding ways and means of getting any form of compensation. How yet. can we get uh, any of the compensation? For example, if perhaps the OECD rules, we have not signed onto them. Do you know? No, we have not signed. We have not signed. We have, we have not signed. That so we can't but, get but the compensation. No, but you see, in Nigeria, mm. there are prosecutions against mm. Shell yeah. in Holland yeah. to compensate the Nigerian government mm. for some of these bribery mm -hmm. and, and, yeah, and New York. Mm. that they did there. So we're discussing that yeah. it's possible that mm. government mm. can task mm. some lawyers mm. to pursue this agenda. And because law of thoughts. Yes. Yeah. If it is obvious that the Ghana government has, and I think Sri Lanka you mentioned, mm. they have actually made a, a formal, uh, uh, communicated their intention mm -hmm. to be compensated. Mm -hmm. Because if indeed the price of these um, 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 aircrafts were ballooned mm -hmm. to accommodate these commissions that were paid, mm. It means that Ghana did not get value. Mm -hmm. An Airbus should compensate the and country. And these are of aircraft Ghana. that we actually bought with loans. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, 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 and Doc was explaining to me how we ended up paying the loans. Monies that should have gone to our military men mm -hmm. have ended up in people's pockets. Mm -hmm. I mean, allegedly. <laughs> Something. <laughs> just, just to mm. add a little to that bit. Mm. You see, Bobby, it's not that these countries did not suffer financial loss, they also did. They did through the resources they spent in investigating. In investigating. Right. And then Airbus is also owned by more or less the EU, more or less. It's a public entity within mm. the EU. Mm. The states have mm. some shares mm. in there. Mm. So depending on how much they pay out, it could also affect potential dividends to be paid. Okay, okay let me okay. add. Okay. But in the judgment, the, what the investigation, mm -hmm. the UK one, they said about seven million pounds. Eh? So that's small. No, so no, Bobby's point. No, no, so it, so they should it. deduct their no, seven no, million pounds. Yes. No, but, but you see, you yeah, should yeah. also understand that there, there was a certain principle in there mm. that yeah. this was to be a punitive measure to serve as a deterrent for other organizations going Not, forward. Mm. And that even within the DPA mm. arrangement, mm. they have structured this this way such that those who on their own know that they have committed similar offenses can come, come. forward and in quotes they will be sorted mm. out <laughs> now just to take us back a bit you know when we spoke earlier a few minutes ago about the fact that the activities were of a nature that more or less was planned, okay. We were trying to, not that we, the, the, the courts were, were trying to say that, look, these DPAs are not just done for the purposes of plea bargaining or anything. That's right. But there are some principles that mm -hmm. underlie. Mm -hmm. And one is public interest, That's right. fairness, and justice. Mm -hmm. So if we try as a country to even use our laws, we may have to improve on some of the, you know, weddings in there mm. to capture some of these things. Yeah. So that you don't necessarily just go to plea bargain mm -hmm. just to be set free. Mm -hmm. But you'll be subjected to certain principles that will show that, mm -hmm. indeed, if we give you that leeway through a DPA, that decision to mm -hmm. use those DPA arrangements will be in the interest of the public. Mm -hmm. There will be fairness and will also serve mm -hmm. the purpose of justice. Mm -hmm. Uh, interest, interest of justice, mm -hmm. fair, reasonable, and proportionate. Yeah. And that's the test that was mm -hmm. used. Mm -hmm. And again, they said that um, they also have to look at your track record. Mm -hmm. yeah. how, how often have you been doing this yes. thing? Yes. And what measures have you put in place? Yes. And they had checked and realized that Airbus had yes. commenced various processes yes. to remedy and to, in future, prevent these bribes from being given. Yes. And, and then there was also a purposive bit where they spoke about the fact that the company was employing a huge number of people. It was not really part mm. of the right. principles, but mm. you can deduce that <laughs> yeah. all those considerations, yes. so that yeah. yes. whole activity of ensuring mm -hmm. that these things 
actually protects the state and the people within were in there. Yes. But the last thing I'm going to add is that, unfortunately, with these funds, unless maybe these countries decide to give us maybe a grant mm. on their own volition, mm. we will never be able to get part of this because in the UK, for instance, the guy says that money was to be paid into the consolidated fund. And once it goes into a consolidated fund, it is public funds that people of Ghana, technically speaking, cannot assess. And dog, it doesn't right. belong to them. It no, doesn't no, make it right. No, let's no, make no, an no, 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 hold on, hold let's on. Let's make let's an attempt. But hold I don't on, think that on. we should necessarily go for part of that $3 billion. Yes. We should take our, we should independent, take our own independent yes. action. Yes. We should we take our independent that, action. Yes, we and have then been say wrong that we have lost, yes. We should take our own independent action. But for this particular money... But they have noted that for a long time, there's not been such payment to this level, Yes. this amount of money. So this was so, why they were saying so, this is So if you are going for, for a separate and extra mm. compensation, mm. what do you think will yeah. be the attitude of the court uh -huh. when they have clearly said that mm -hmm. this is like historic? Mm -hmm. Nobody has paid mm -hmm. so much. Yes, but at the end before. of the day, we as a country, mm. we have lost. Should they go scot-free? No, but, that's why but, they have, they have but, paid. No, no, but, no, no. But, 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 mm. The other thing is that if you understand, the, the courts are saying that the offenses committed by Airbus mm. were grave. Right. Mm. So it is not just about the quantum. They were looking at the magnitude or the seriousness of the offenses. Mm. And the bigger the offense, the more likely that you are going to get a bigger mm. punishment by way of what you have to pay. Okay. And they're also looking at Airbus as an entity, how much they make on a yearly basis, the worth of the company, and what this punishment, in quote, will do to them. Mm. If you give so, them... So let's, paid, let's continue from this point on. What do you make of the president's direction to the OSP, and what are your expectations? Well, I, I think that that is a very right call. You see, as a country, we cannot continue to sit aloof when issues of national and international importance come to the fore. If you look at the transactions as have happened and the judgment, Ghana's name features in there. Count five is all about Ghana. That's right. And not just Ghana, but the government of Ghana itself is involved. So the state, technically speaking, is involved. And I think the right call is what the president has put out there. Mm. Now, for the OSP, I think this is a very good opportunity for them to do a good job for the people of Ghana, for all of us to have confidence in them, that irrespective of whoever is involved, whether it's a government official or an individual, Ghanaian citizen or whatever, they will always be there to do what is right. Mm. We can take a cue from what is happening in the other countries. The whole scheme or the whole arrangement was basically about the same for all the countries involved, the structure. And others have been very proactive. They have started their investigations. Some have even arrested some people and all that. So I think that the OSP should ensure that within their processes, these things are done swiftly and some conclusion is brought to the fore for the people of Ghana to see that indeed that office is working. So Bobby had said earlier that the question of, say, government official one mm -hmm. and intermediary five may be a difficult one because there could be several government officials yes. who you could also trace to have relations or brothers outside of this country and in, in Britain. Is he right about that? And perhaps may I say, is he not wrong because the, they speak to one particular individual throughout the transaction as government official one, and not that there was a termination at one point and somebody comes over and that person is still described as government official one? I mean, both of you are right. You see, when you start from Bobby's end, mm. he is looking at it that you are in a maze. And you have to find your way out. So to start off with, you have a situation where you could have maybe two, three, four, five, or even ten people who may fit that description. That, description, yeah. that is what he was trying yeah. to say. How is that possible? No, no, wait, wait. No, it's, until it's, it's, we are giving no, the see, name. Uh, until, until you have the name. <laughs> you see, the way the society is structured, especially between Ghana and the UK, yeah. there are a lot of people in Ghana who may have brothers and sisters in the UK mm -hmm. because of the traditional ties. Mm -hmm. That is, like I said, when you start off in a maze. But it is simple because the judgment itself tells us that, look, the individuals or the persons involved are known. So we can actually request for their names through the proper legal 
infrastructure at the OSP can help all of us. He also, Bobby took the position that, look, for us as professionals, we wouldn't want to join the bad wagon and, you know, just spill things out there. But I'm sure individually, we may all have our, our own, own inclination, inclination of to who My, my question is, mm -hmm. is there a logic to suggest otherwise that government official one is one individual from the start to the end? It, it is one individual. It is one individual. The whole judgment gives us a lot of pointers. Mm. It talks about the point at which the person assumed office. Right. The fact that the person is still living, or at least up to the end of 2016, when the person exited, the person was still alive, and what have you. So clearly, we can narrow it down to the people who were in government at the time. Mm. And it tells us that they were elected mm. officials. Mm. So it is so clear. Elected officials. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Okay, elected <laughs> officials, sorry. <laughs> it is one person. And he actually even started the phone calls to Airbus or made a contact. So there's no doubt right about up upon assumption, assumption of, of office. office. Yeah, so there's no doubt about it. 2009. Nine. Yes. January. In fact, if you want to narrow it, you can take out the previous government out. All those who started from that point, you know them. We know who belongs to where, who is a key decision maker, who potentially could be a key decision maker. So like I said, in our own individual closet, I'm sure we all have a fair idea who that person could be. Mm -hmm. But we are injuncted by the fact that we are professionals mm -hmm. and the fact that we also don't want to prejudice further activities mm -hmm. as stated by the judge in the judgment. Mm -hmm. But the state can easily get access <coughs> to those records as we have all discussed here. Can individual five, intermediary five, who is individual five mm -hmm. yes. in, in, America, the, America. in the American <laughs> judgment, who in the UK judgment is a close relative, mm -hmm. and in the American judgment, is a brother, a brother mm -hmm. to government official one. Can he change at any point from the start to the end of the transaction? He cannot change because the records are there. Look, you were told that even the I'm asking so because he had suggested earlier mm -hmm. that there could be several no, other no, 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 uh, lay listeners, you know, usually they don't have patience for this legal rules and this thing. <laughs> so maybe the Sulip Man Abraham's conspiracy, uh, the way he has explained it, perhaps satisfied because you see that he tries to show that at one point it was General Smith who was in office as defense minister. He doesn't have a brother in the UK. You know, he did some elimination. Right. Uh, rough, <laughs> well, if you call it <laughs> rough tactics or something. Said that. Yes, so you see, he did it and then arrived at a certain conclusion. Yes, we as professionals can't be categorical, but many people, if they want to, except that we'll plead. Okay, that Sule says he arrived at a certain projection. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> not a conclusion. Yeah, excellent. Like a certain yes. logical so, projection. So you see why from the mm. beginning I said that mm. we missed it when so far we have not thrown the searchlight on Mr. Amidu. That okay. is where, yeah. because you can see we are all yearning to arrive mm. at the answer, right? Mm. So that's where we should then go to Mr. Amidu and find out. Mm. Look, this is his letter is even going to post to the UK. Right. What, is it going to be ordinary name mm. or is it going to be DHL? <laughs> or is the letter there already? Exactly. So that is where, and every day we should be getting updates because you know even so far, though under his act, He's supposed to give us updates of cases mm, like that mm, twice a year. Mm. I don't know. You may correct me. So mm. far, I haven't read an official one. There was a the last one, it was a leak. Yeah. It was a leak. So where is Miss Amidu? It's there in the act, mm. patently. I left yeah, my you're right, you're right. It's okay. there that he should give an mm. update twice a year, right? Mm. So let's see. I, I so, think, so far, I think, we are not getting it. Do, do you, you think, think he has a, he has a difficult task with this one? the media. Do you think he has a difficult task with this one? Well, it could be difficult, but not surmountable. Because, look. Difficult in the sense that now you have to go out of the jurisdiction to try and unearth certain things. But looking at the way states work and looking at the way the graft agencies also work. A bribery offense where you had evidence in documents of over 30 Yeah, million. but you, you, you would need saying to get those. You will have a difficult task. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that difficult in the sense that now he has to go out of the jurisdiction to go and get the entirety of the evidence and, you know, get mm. further 
and by your suggestions, using the mutual legal assistance law, mm -hmm. he can get it. It is easier mm -hmm. for to him get to get that. it. Yeah. Okay. In fact, I'm sure that if he goes to them, in one or two sittings, they can mm -hmm. deliver as much as she wants. He wants to them. Mm -hmm. So, what it, it, what will he do mm -hmm. with what he gets if he applied for the evidence and they gave him the evidence and the names of the people involved? Then he will call them. Mm -hmm. So he's naturally going to build on that. Because remember, in the judgment, they just said that the scheme was elaborate and complex. Mm -hmm. So it's no child's mm -hmm. play. Mm -hmm. So it means that Ms. Amidu has a lot of work already done for him. So he's naturally expected to build on that. Okay? Yes. So when he gets them, and then the judge says she has the, the, the names, right? So those names will be disclosed, the Ghanaian ones. Then Ms. Amidu will call them. What will he do with them? Just but call them. Yes. He's supposed to take them through our legal yes. processes. It's, 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 uh, it's Martin's. Uh, uh, okay, yes. So <laughs> under the act, but he's going to investigate them. So he's going to invite them. Okay, maybe the word call, right? Yes, so whichever <laughs> way, bottom line, he has to engage them. In that Sri Lanka, they yeah. are being arrested. Mm. They are not being called. Oh, Sam, good. Good that you mentioned this arrest. I think, Ghanaians, <laughs> we are too fixated with the word arrest. We are often interested in arrest, arrest. Meanwhile, we don't speed up the mm. trial mm. itself. We are, as soon as they say somebody's done anything wrong, hey, has he been arrested? What does an arrest do? Look, you can arrest him, keep him in jail for 100 years. If not convicted him, but in any event, then you would have abused his right. Mm. So it's even good if repeated. I think we should stop this matter of arrest, arrest, arrest. Let's get into investigate. So you invite him, grant him bail, and then go into the matter. Be mm. interested what in are the, the What are the potential offenses here? That's what I'm looking at. You call them and say, what? What have you done? Uh, oh, no, I have no. seen emails that uh, Kofi Menu took the money and brought it to you. And whose money is okay, it? Okay, Sam, is it's it, not my is question. Is it your man. money? Yes, yes, it's your yes. in the judgment, he says that the payments were made mm. to mm. induce, yeah. okay, or get in favor, uh, what, improper, uh, this in favor. Mm. Yes, there's some, there are some words that were used. Oh, dear. So it means to retain that, business or advantage. Uh -huh. And then there's another part that said that government official one would then behave mm. improperly. Mm. There's improper mm. behavior. Mm. So that's the corruption bit. Mm. So, you know, under Section 239 of uh, uh, this, uh, Act 29, the mm. Criminal Offenses yeah. Act, you influence a government official to uh, uh, this, uh, behave otherwise than he's supposed to officially do so that you gain an advantage. It's corruption, mm -hmm. okay? And even the private person who pays the money, you know, under uh, the causing financial law, section mm -hmm. 179C, mm -hmm. uh, okay. if a private person pays money to a government official for him to uh, this a benefit, I mean, it's also... Abuse of office for private gain. Excellent. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. it. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's read it out, mm -hmm. uh, 179C. Uh, sometimes it helps. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm there. It says right. that a person commits a criminal offense who, A, while holding a public office, corruptly or dishonestly abuses the office for private profit or benefit, or B, not being a holder of a public office, acts or is found to have acted in collaboration with a person holding a public office, for the latter to corruptly or dishonestly abuse the public office for private profit or benefit. So, so you, you don't have to be in public office only to be held by it. Excellent. And you if remember, you are not in public office, but you yes. helped, like you said. Excellent. And you know even there's a Supreme Court decision on it. This uh, may be in Johnson. Yeah. I think the former National Security Coordinator went mm. to court. Mm. And the Supreme Court said, no, no, no. If Shiraj is investigating the fact that you are not a public official at the time is no answer so even apart from the express mm. provision here this is supreme court decision mm. once it's corruption please private or at least to the extent that you helped then that one the, the law would catch you okay I see. yes so to the extent that the uk judgment the judges listened to the evidence and made a finding that the payments were made to not just as for getting business is legal, but it says to ensure improper behavior. I think let's move mm. on. I'll get the uh, right. excellent. Mm. So, let's read it. Let's read it. It mm. says that look, false documentation. So paragraph 53 mm. says false documentation was created by or with the agreement of Airbus employees right. in order to support and disguise these payments. The payments were intended to induce 
or reward improper favor right. by government official one towards airbags. You say mm. yes, improper. So, so, uh, favor. so, so if you can comp conclude yours there with me, uh, uh, for me on this, if our the Ghanaian state, you know, authorities pursuit will be under the the law you refer to. Mm -hmm. So potentially, what are they looking at? To collect the money mm -hmm. or to put you in jail and to put you in jail for how long if you are found guilty? Excellent. So number one, we naturally are interested in the money, <laughs> collect the money. <laughs> Thankfully, Mr. Amidu's act allows for the person to mm -hmm. give. And less of a jail sentence. But let's say, to answer your law, legally, they say from 250 penalty units upwards, a penalty unit is still 12 C's there. Eh? Yes, 12 cities. So from 250, so you multiply minimum of 250 upwards and up to a maximum jail term of 10 years. Yeah, so the D, let me read it out. It says, D, a person convicted of a criminal offense specified in this chapter is liable to a fine of not less than 250 penalty units or to a term of imprisonment not exceeding 10 years or to both the fine and the imprisonment. Mm. But you see, like I keep saying, that we should de-emphasize long jail terms. Let's be interested <laughs> in the money. We don't mm. do well at recovering the uh, you know, state funds. Okay? So let's rather, when we do gets in there, we should be interested in disgorging the money mm. so that we get it back. We can build hospitals, schools, and all that with it. If the man is in custody, don't forget, of course, he will suffer so but much. If, but if a government official yeah. and his brother were involved in such a huge scheme of bribery and corruption, shouldn't we be looking at something higher than this rather than, what is it, 3,000 Ghana cities? Mm -hmm. It's a minimum. So minimum. Uh -huh, minimum. Okay. So it could go up. So it could go up. Uh, don't forget, there's the apart from collecting the money. Mm -hmm. Okay. The minimum you could mm -hmm. get is three thousand mm -hmm. Ghana cities, mm -hmm. or go to jail for mm -hmm. ten years, mm -hmm. or both, or hey, both. Sam, let's not uh, listen underestimate the conditions in Insawame. You okay. know, currently <laughs> they are fed of once the eighty pesos a day. Mm. It's terribly bad. The overcrowdedness. Don't even forget. Let's even start the naming and shaming. You know, even this discussion. The judge spoke about the fact that in some other countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The people will stand trial mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they are likely to suffer mm -hmm. death. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sam, look, in China, they execute people for corruption. Mm -hmm. Has it stopped? Has it stopped? It hasn't. Ghana, we used to execute people for armed robbery. Uh, robbery. Has it stopped? No. So that's why I said, look, let's de emphasize lengthy jail terms okay. and rather concentrate on getting all mm -hmm. the money back right. first. So after say, we've say, recovered all the money, yeah. then Sam, let's uh, make this point. Mm -hmm. You know, people have been saying in the social media that. There is no evidence of payment to uh, official one. Please, mm -hmm. we have uh, jurisprudence on these things. If only it is found that the payments were made to intermediary five for the benefit of mm -hmm. official one. Oh, there well. are decided mm -hmm. cases. You will find Republic versus Hagan, previous ministers, Republic versus Nkumsa. Mm -hmm. The payments were never made directly mm -hmm. to the ministers. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, Azukrab J said mm -hmm. that no, he finds that there was corruption. Mm -hmm. And so... Nkumsa, who was a deputy speaker of parliament in those days, was found guilty. I see. And the payments were all made to the minister of trade at the time. Mm. You see, Amman. Okay. Yeah, so there is a lot of jurisprudence. Interesting. Um, just a quick one. Yes. You see, on this mm. business of, in quote, mm. the years of, or the, the punishment and what have you, mm. we, we should not also forget that this whole bit is a very simple and straight one for Amidu. Mm. One, it's going to be based on bribery, corruption, and related matters. It's, it's, it's a straightforward thing, mm. and part of the work is being done. Now, when he comes back into our jurisdiction and he wants to go by our you know, legal regime, the ultimate punishment will also be dependent on the accounts and which of them, or the charges, and which mm. of them the individuals involved will be found guilty. Okay. Now, when it comes to the sentences, you may serve the punishment concurrently or otherwise. So it could be more mm. than the 10. Okay. Mm. These days, there are several dozens of counts mm. that yes. come from the Attorney General's <laughs> yes. department. To, the, to, so, to, ask the, to answer the question. As if to say mean, that at all costs, something must, must take. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I, we are facing charges of 60, in 70, excess of 60, 70 yeah. counts, 
then they are going somebody will say, it's like, like I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, you are being unfair. <laughs> yeah. let, let's give one example. I'm being unfair so to who they are trying to do. Because let me mention something, you see, so that viewers will know. Look, okay. viewers, if let's say somebody is said to have stolen 30 Ghana cities, right. but he didn't steal it at a go. Mm. He stole one CD a day mm. for each of the days of the month. Mm. If you are going to court, you cannot say stealing cannot 30 it as one offense. Mm. So you have mm. 30 charges. Right. So that's the context. Mm. All right. uh -huh. Thank so you. I would want yes. to... Uh, I, I is, it, is it going to be a difficult job for the special prosecutor? And must it end there? Yesterday, Parliament just rejected, you know, um, an invitation to do a bipartisan mm. inquiry. Well, I first, I don't, I am of the opinion, even though I think I may be in the minority here, that this is not something that should have been left to the SV, the Office of the Special Prosecutor. Uh -huh. mm. I think that, one, there should have been an independent inquiry of it, and then whatever decision will come out of the report would be given to the state agencies to prosecute directly. That is my opinion. Because of, well, that is what the main thing I was going to say, but my, because of this, I'm not saying that the special prosecutor, I'm talking about not the office, the person, mm. does not have the capacity mm. or the competence to. I'm not saying it. But I think that the optics may not be, the perception, in my humble opinion, may not be too favorable at this stage. The reason being that it's not been confirmed, and I stand to be corrected, that he gave a legal opinion on the transaction before. Now, given, as an attorney general, given a legal opinion, you are not required to discuss the business aspect of the transaction. Now, the question is whether or not it was disclosed to him at the time he gave the opinion that there was an intermediary. And whether if it was disclosed to him, he did his investigations to but, find but out... But Martin Amidu is not the only officer in the, that office. No, in the fact, attorney general... Fact, he, has, he has a deputy. No, but, well, he signed the opinion. Let me put it that way. I, I, that is what so happened. I'm, I'm saying, saying, I'm saying that here. if he is conflicted, mm. he's not the only one there. No, okay. So the reason why I said it's an, an office, mm. and not that, he, that the office does not have the capacity or the competence, mm. because of the personality involved. Mm. We know how strong-willed mm. of a person he is. That is without doubt. Mm. And if his office is investigating a matter where there's a possibility of somebody asking that Mr. Amidu, whilst you were attorney general, you gave a legal opinion on this. Did you ask A, B, C, D, E questions? Mm. If those questions were asked, did you get the answers that you asked for? And when, if you got the answers, what further due diligence did you do for you to even at that stage say, mm, I see Company D is partly owned by Kofi, mm -hmm. and Kofi is related to government official one. Mm -hmm. Then there's a potential breach of something. I'm just saying that I don't know the extent or what went into mm -hmm. that legal opinion because the legal opinion would be one of the documents that will come up in the investigation mm -hmm. locally. Because you see, it's an international business transaction. Mm -hmm. So definitely it went to parliament. Mm -hmm. And in the documentation that the government at the time or the majority will present to parliament, mm -hmm. they would, it would definitely contain the legal opinion. Yeah. Because we've seen defenses that, hey, but the Attorney General gave a legal opinion that we should proceed mm -hmm. in other transactions. Mm -hmm. And if it is Mr. Amidu's signature that was on the legal opinion, mm -hmm. it means a document that he has signed mm -hmm. will become part of the record of something that he is investigating. Mm -hmm. Again, it does not affect his capacity. Mm -hmm. It does not affect his competence. But I think the optics at some point in time, mm -hmm. it may come up. That it mm -hmm. it justice not only ought to be seen to be done. But manifest, I think you say. So I, I, I would have preferred that the president would have constituted, I don't want to say a bipartisan, because then that would suggest that it is only MPP and NDC members. But do they have the capacity to do such an investigation as a parliament? No, no, and no. And knowing the parliament that. Oh, I'm not have. even interested in parliament investigating mm. this. No. Mm. Like the way. Um, the president constituted a commission mm -hmm. for the Ayawaso West Wagon okay. because okay. this is something that affects the reputation of Ghana. Mm -hmm. I heard the Minister of Information saying it's the greatest embarrassment I, I read somewhere mm -hmm. that Ghana has suffered internationally. An independent made That's up of. Debatable anyway. Well, mm -hmm. an independent commission of inquiry made up of civil society groups, qualified persons to sit dispassionately analyze the evidence mm. and then come out with a report. And it should be live All right. mm -hmm. so that everybody will see it. Mm. So that at the end of the day, whoever is in government, mm. if they decide to sit on that report, 
the, 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 the verdict will be out for the public to see. Mm. And whatever the outcome is, it could be handed over to the Attorney General's department mm. for direct prosecution. Now, I would want to speak whether or not it's a difficult tax. And let me just round up. You, I know you, you refer mm. to some cases. Mm. There's a, a decision I came across mm -hmm. um, by Justice Appel when he was at the Court of Appeal. Mm -hmm. And it is Joseph J. versus the Republic. Yeah, yeah. And this 2010-22 of one Ghana law report, 694. Mm -hmm. It involved an official of the GRE mm -hmm. who was taxed to investigate, uh, sorry, to do a tax audit mm -hmm. of a media house. I'll not mention the name, mm. even though it's in the law report. Yeah. Mm. And then he received money. And so the argument was that because he received money, it affected his assessment and he lowered the tax that was payable. And the Court of Appeals said the mere receipt of money by a public officer from someone he had worked for in the course of his official duties was not proof or of or was not conclusive that corruption had taken place. But this is a court of appeal. Yes. And so even though no, no, there no. may be evidence Bobby, that... Bobby, the context mm. is that the person who paid, the company, they flew him out. So he wasn't there to give evidence. So, I'm, I'm, so I'm, maybe I'm, the I'm, context... Yes. So I'm coming, that, oh, no, 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 no. I'm coming, I'm coming back to, uh, uh, yeah. to build my point. That it is not enough that there's evidence that money was paid. Mm. The judgment mm. from the SADC court yes. and the, the U.S. court mm -hmm. have stated that the purpose of the money was to influence the decision-making process. What I think would determine whether or not there was actually corruption, irrespective of the fact that money had been paid and received, mm -hmm. was whether there was a value for money analysis. Mm -hmm. Because for me, that would be the conclusion of the matter. Mm. Because in, in one of the debates, and I've read the hands that, right. Papu Uswan Kuma asked the question, mm. who did an independent due diligence for the government of Ghana? Mm -hmm. And the answer, according to the hands that was, it has been done. Up to date, I don't know whether government of Ghana ever did an official due diligence. Because like you rightly said, Airbus is not a charity. Yeah. If they are paying 3 million euros to secure a contract, definitely that 3 million euros will be part of the cost. Mm -hmm. And so the government will pay. Mm. So if it comes out that, listen, the government of Ghana ordinarily would have paid 5 CDs for this aircraft, or we had a better offer for 2 CDs mm -hmm. from company X, what? But because of the interest of what? government official one mm -hmm. and his brother, mm -hmm. we ended up paying eight CDs. Then, of course, you would conclude it to be conclusive that the purpose of the money, and it ended up achieving that purpose, was to, was to get a contract at a price or at a value that ordinarily would not have. Right. So I'm, if there was no such due diligence mm -hmm. report, mm -hmm. then we are, we are in trouble. You have heard Chairman Sabo to suggest that at the time, the questions that they were asking included that they had actually sought independently mm -hmm. to find out from the companies yes. involved yes. how much the standard mm -hmm. price was. Mm -hmm. And they were directed to their website, website. <laughs> and that they checked. This and they could, 35 million. They checked, yeah. and they could tell. That's how he comes by the conclusion mm -hmm. that they were inflated mm -hmm. by each, 10 by 10 million at mm -hmm. least. Mm -hmm. He speaks about approvals mm -hmm. um, being advice from the Attorney General being sought on the 21st of July, or is it June? July, the Finance Minister giving approval on the same day, President Mills giving you know, his executive approval on the same day. Yeah, and PPA processes almost everything same day. So that's the, his suggestion. The optics are not, are not right. That's but his suggestion. The, so the, the so he says that to, to suggest that you could not have done then, a due oh, diligence yeah. process yeah. to come to an arrival mm. of um, mm. value for money. Mm. With, yes, I agree. And if that process, there's evidence that it was not done, then those who were involved are in trouble. Mm. I recall, again, I read that during the response to that was that the price that you've seen on the website is the price for the shell mm. of the aircraft. Mm. And that the government of Ghana requested for Specs. Eh? specs. Okay. And so the extra price is the specs. Yeah. Again, it comes down to the so value see why for we have to wait for the mm. do. Mm. Exactly. We we definitely would, it, that is what I'm saying. It's not straightforward mm. that the fact that money has been paid mm. to these people is conclusive evidence that there was corruption. Mm. We need to ask 
ah. further questions. But those money should have been for what? No, that is what I'm saying. No, that's but, if, uh -huh. but here in paragraph 53, the judge says I have findings that they were intended to induce or reward. You see, she uses the word. No, you see, I'm not. I'm mm. not saying that what mm. has been done that is right. And the American court says, mm. in fact, mm. the use of this brother mm -hmm. is because of the closeness. It was purposeful. Yeah, because they said the brother had no government background official one. In that government official one who was a key decision maker yeah. in. Ghana purchasing aircraft. All that I'm saying mm. is that to make the matter straight and without any doubt, there must be either a value for money analysis in mm. support of the prosecution if mm. we get there, mm -hmm. or if it is not there, it will be part of the charge or whatever, the, okay. the discussion. So what you're saying is people that otherwise the money would have been legitimate commission paid to an intermediary. Exactly my point. No, no, because no. you see, no, will that see? commission be unconscionable? No, will that commission something. be mm -hmm. unreasonable? Something. You see, and I'm talking purely from a lawyer's mm -hmm. defense angle mm -hmm. point of view. The burden on this is a criminal matter mm -hmm. is beyond reasonable doubt. Yes. Monies have been paid. Mm -hmm. The monies were described as commission payment. The investigation. No. no the no. judge doesn't no. accept. No, 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 no. I'm coming to the. I'm coming. Right. No, no. I'm coming yeah. to the judge. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about between the parties. Mm -hmm. Of course, they will not write that it is bribe. Mm -hmm. They will describe it as commission payment. Mm -hmm. A court in America, mm -hmm. France, and land, uh, England, mm -hmm. they have done their investigation mm -hmm. and have concluded that they were intended. Mm -hmm. That is the word. Mm -hmm. Intended, intended, to corrupt a process. Mm -hmm. They have held on to evidence that have not given to us. Mm. And all that I'm saying, that if I was on the defense side, the question that would be asked mm. is that, yes, that was the intention according to your investigation. Mm. Show me the value for money analysis. Okay. If the value for money analysis is that you should have paid five CDs, but you ended up paying eight CDs, then it is easy to conclude that the only reason why you paid eight CDs was because two out of that extra three CDs and then up in the pockets of individuals. Okay. That brother, is all that I'm saying. But yes, that's, that's, that's apart. Yes, yes, one yeah. point. Mm. Look, that's apart. Don't forget, Airbus has a competitor, Boeing. Okay? Right. So, if you pay so that, even if you get the correct value, don't forget that the option could have been, could we have gone to Boeing? At what okay? value? Uh -huh. So, it means no. that the payment, so the point I'm making is that we don't always have to say there must be a value for money analysis to be able to clinch a corruption deal. No. The point is that, I'm selling aircraft, then I see that, okay, in order to induce you to buy, I make a payment. Yes, perhaps if the, pay, the inducement hadn't been done, you'd mm -hmm. have gone to the competitor. So but that is what you that's said, one perhaps. Way. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> so the, the value for money uh, analysis here is just one way. It doesn't conclude that sure. uh, if the value for money shows that, yes, we got value for mm -hmm. money, then it means that there's no corruption. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Even if you get value for money, did we check with our competitor? Why did we go sole sourcing? Why did we? You see, yeah, all you those know, things then come in. Then the PPA Act comes in. Where you government see. officials in the, in the public space have been thought of, of engaging in improper conduct, mm -hmm. decided cases. Mm -hmm. By the end of the day, because of the standard of proof, yes. the yes. Mabian and Johnson case is a perfect example. Mm -hmm. if, if you, without me having that hat on as a lawyer, mm -hmm. I would say that definitely the government official was involved in whatever. But at the end of the day, I don't think he was found guilty. Mm. We can speak of the, uh, so, uh, may he so rest in peace, Jacob H. Bilante's mm. situation. Yeah. That the Supreme Court even went to the extent, I, 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 don't, I don't remember if they used the word, it may be immoral or just uh, the land acquisition. The land acquisition. Yes. Yes. That because of his position, he got it for less than what another. But it's, it's, it's a matter that professionally, mm. again, professionally, mm. for me, the, it's not good the, the, that monies were paid, yeah, okay. but whether or not it will lead yeah. to a conviction, mm. we would have to prove that, but for the payment of money, we wouldn't have given the contract to Airbus right. and wouldn't have paid that amount to Airbus. That okay. is all that I'm saying. The, there are those who uh, suggest, Justice, that it is also possible because in this process, as far as we know, it is Airbus employees that have been spoken to. They are the ones who have given their story. Mm -hmm. And these courts have bought the story. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it is possible that they could have been telling mm -hmm. things that don't exist. Do you buy that argument? Well, to be honest with you, I don't. You know why? We shouldn't proceed on the premise that 
it is only Airbus employees who have been spoken to. I think that would be a wrong notion to carry. You see, the DPA was specific to them. But it tells, the, 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 the judgment also tells us that investigations bordering on the individual are still ongoing as we speak. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised that our official Watts and his brother or relative, we, we, that is number five, as Bobby mm -hmm. would say, <laughs> may have been spoken to. I wouldn't be surprised. He's a UK citizen. It, yes, it is a part mm -hmm. of a bigger mm -hmm. national, uh, international activity. Don't forget that the Americans also said our government official Watts is known to them. So as far as I'm concerned, that bit about it's only about airbus stuff and mm. all that no let's also not forget that we are lawyers so we understand these things properly courts are just not run by in quote people who have no understanding or knowledge of what is going on these are world trade people these are people who have experience and all that for a judge to sit on such a high pro profile case you know that this is no mean a judge Mm. No, but they so, make mistakes. That's yes, why they make mistakes. that's why Agree. you can get a victory in <laughs> the high court and then and the court of appeal will throw it <laughs> yes. away. Agree. You can win at the court of appeal, mm. win at the high court, but mm. Supreme Court will throw yes. you away. Mm. Yes. Mm. But in terms of the things that will be brought to them, they wouldn't get them there. Okay. They talk about falsification of documents. That's mm. right. Which Airbus has actually accepted mm. that yes, indeed, we falsify certain things just to make it look as if it was not a bribe. All right. Mm. So clearly. Mm. It, 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 it's, it's something that has been well thought through. They've mm. evaluated a lot Therefore, of it. Therefore, it's not going to be a difficult job. I don't job, think it's going to be a, a difficult job. Mm. All right. The only bit is that we'll mm. have to go through our processes. Mm. The only other bit, like Bobby was introducing, is that beyond what they will get from the UK, France, American authorities, they mm. may also have to look at some of the things that happened mm. here in Ghana mm. as part of the whole purchase arrangement. They, 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 that may rope mm. in some other persons beyond one official one and WDI five. Okay. But Bobby, just on your bit, you know, I will want to disagree on this committee thing for the simple reason that the commission for inquiry. Yes. Mm. In this country, anytime there's been a commission of inquiry, what happens is that at the end of the day, government will issue a certain white paper. <laughs> and most times it becomes controversial. Mm. So I wouldn't want them to go into that realm, say that by the time the work is done, depending on who is sitting on what chair, mm. some white paper will come out that throws the whole country into another discussion because of the controversy around it. The independent prosecutor is supposed to be independent-minded, generally speaking. Of course, we know the AG can come in as and when. Mm. So I think that at this point, we should just allow that process to continue. Mm. I see. Um, interesting, but uh, I wanted to conclude uh, this part on perhaps we looking at suggestions that are coming up now. Mm -hmm. um, well, if you speak to people within the politics, you know, mm -hmm. they'll tell you that, look, these things that we are talking about generally as questions of bribe, 10% matters, mm -hmm. look, they are sort of the norm. Oh, yes. All you have to pray is that you are not caught. Yes, oh, that's it. That's right? It. That's why, remember I said it's time from Kwame Nkrumah. Okay. Yeah, Kwame Nkrumah. All you have to pray is that you are not caught. So, somebody may be caught, mm -hmm. and some other person may be shouting, <laughs> just because that person has not been caught. Oh, the thief is the one who is caught. Yeah. <laughs> right. Martin, how does that bring in focus mm -hmm. part of the campaign that, mm -hmm. you know, has begun yeah. about punishing for unexplained wealth. Excellent. Yes. So this one reinforces that campaign, which is that, <laughs> look, you know, the Attorney General says that they are uh, amending the law on uh, asset declaration. Right. Yeah. So we need two amendments. So that the, uh, the asset you declare will be uh -huh. verified. Yes. And then it will be publicized. Excellent. Mm -hmm. But that apart, we need two amendments. One, that the law for uh, uh, unexplained wealth the Constitution mentions in Article 2863. That's right. That if you have wealth, which that's if a person uh, comes into four. office, uh, four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If a person comes into office and then he cannot explain that he got his wealth from his income, gift, inheritance, and the rest, then it's deemed to be uh, unlawful, unlawfully a gift. Yeah. Right? Mm. So let's read it out here just for emphasis. Okay. Three, six, mm -hmm. 
Yes, so four. Any yeah. property or asset mm. acquired by a public officer after the initial declaration required by clause one of this article and which is not reasonably attributable to income, gift, loan, inheritance, or any other reasonable source shall be deemed to have been acquired in contravention of this constitution. Right. Good. So, but this is civil in nature. So we would want to have a specific act that the person be punished. Mm -hmm. But as usual, as uh, you know my thoughts now, even before the uh, criminal one, the first one is that so far, this uh, particular provision comes in in our current uh, dispensation only when somebody dares to report. Right. You see, and from the CDD report the last time, December, the last the news, uh, the, the news file edition we did in IPS, you mm. could see that many people are scared. Right. Many people are scared. Mm. So the solution is that, look, the AG, there should be an amendment in the proposed bill that mm. at the end of everybody's tenure of office, you appear straight before the commission. Mm. Shrad, or if we don't want Shrad, we set up, maybe we'll have a, a permanent commission of inquiry into these matters. Mm. But there should be a provision that automatically when the person, the public officer exits, and as to who and who qualify, ministers, mm. chief directors, and there's a whole list of them there in right. Article 286, right? Mm. 2865. You appear before the commission, and then it should be uh, telecast live mm. so that everybody can see. Then well, you explain the sources of the wealth, the mm. assets you've acquired. Since All right. Briefly, Bobby, office. what do you have to say about that? I think in, in the UK, uh, DS is for 50,000 mm. uh, 50, pounds. Mm -hmm. If you are a public officer and you have acquired mm -hmm. you know, wealth, that value, mm -hmm. and you can't explain the source, mm -hmm. <laughs> you lose it. Mm -hmm. Well, it's something that as, as we are developing as a, as a country, we mm. should look at. Um, the only worry is if it will not be another law that will be used by politicians mm. against other politicians. Or would be used, you know, against yes, we've got a lot target. of cases when mm. they get permission. Yeah, that is what I'm saying. All that that, that it's, it's definitely, a, mm. and I think the introduction of the tax identification number. Mm. My only worry is the implementation. All right. Because I recall that they said that, for example, if you are going to register a lamp mm. at the Lands Commission, you need your tax identification number to be included. Mm. If you are going to register a vehicle in your name at the DVLA, they would, so that they can synchronize the system and check. Mm -hmm. But I have done some of these things in my, in my I mean, professional life, and mm -hmm. they never requested for them. So we may say it, but the system of implementing it mm -hmm. is what may leave room for political machinations okay. to be used as a tool. All right. Um, yes, you want a minute on that. Is it useful? We need something oh, like that. Well, we, we may have to think about it because we are looking at a because content. if we can't catch you taking mm -hmm. it, yes. we should get you explain where you got, you got the money. I mean, you know, in the, in the UK, for instance, the first victim, the woman, yes. uh, mm. Zamira, Wife of, uh, yes, a former mm. chairman of a state mm. bank, mm. even though it was not her person, mm. once her husband was prosecuted, the property that was in her name, the UK government now deems that that property within Nigeria, it's one that falls squarely under the unexplained world order. All so right. they even looked at her expenditure and mm -hmm. all that. So clearly, mm. these are things that we can look at, probably incorporating them one way or the other, but not forgetting the caveat that Bobby brought up, that mm. if it does not end up being a tool, that will be used to witch hunt others. OK. Um, so like uh, you guys said, it's only a matter of time. We should wait for a special prosecutor. And we may get the opportunity of seeing the emails that were circulated <laughs> among these people. But I want to read just about two, three highlights of the development from the US um, uh, PDA for you. And they said that, in fact, that is in paragraph 134, that in fact, Airbus or its vendors had paid, offered, or agreed to pay political contributions, fees, or commissions in connection with these sales in the amount of at least 3.5, uh, in excess of 3.5 million euros. Then another paragraph that between 2009 and 2016, individual one, a citizen of Ghana, was a high elected government official in Ghana. A high elected 
government official in Ghana. MPs are not government officials, right? I think you can take MPs out. Elected government officials. Okay. MPs are elected public officers. They are not elected okay. government officials. Okay. Government official in Ghana during the relevant uh, time, beginning in or around 2009, a few months after Individual 1 took office, Individual 1 was in direct and repeated contact with senior Airbus executives from both the Defense and Space Division and SMO International about Airbus sales campaigns. Individual 1, remember Individual 1 is government official 1 in the UK judgment, was influential in having the government of Ghana approve aircraft purchases. And Individual 1 contacted Airbus senior executives during the government approval process. In 2011, during Individual 1's time in office, the Ghanaian parliament approved the purchase of two uh, C-295 aircrafts. That's where mm -hmm. I'll yeah. end part of my summary that I tried to do. Mm -hmm. We will be right back. And when we come, we will look for excavators. <laughs> um, there's been some controversy about excavators. But what we know is that as early as uh, August 2018, the Vanguard team had already seized as many as over 600 excavators. So if somebody tells you that there has not been any, you know, 500 excavators or anything, take it with a pinch of salt. We'll be right back. Right, you're welcome back. This is News File. It's your most authoritative news analysis platform. And here on News File, we put Ghana first. I'll be sharing some of your messages uh, with the rest of the world very soon. This show is brought to you by the kind of sponsorship of MTN everywhere you go. Star Assurance, your solid partner, Bank of Africa, as strong as a group and close as a partner. Amen Scientific, God is the healer. And Duraplus, where Duraplus goes, water flows. Um, so now, let's um, look at the matters of the excavators that um, we are told have vanished. Okay, let me just read just a few of your messages, then we'll go on. Um, Kwame says that, as to individual stroke official number one, the more I listen to the legal arguments, the more I think the NDC must just save us all <laughs> and put the name out That's if they all. really claim they know the personality. This is about national image mm -hmm. and the fact that we need to put the national interest ahead of party interest. Um, okay. Uh, Right, I'll, I'll, share, I'll share a couple more with you shortly. Uh, some of your messages, I'm sorry, but I can't be a conveyor belt for them. Uh, Citizen Francis says, BBC had access to the Airbus bribery report in 2016. That is why a reporter during an interview with government official one um, asked him a direct question as to whether he had been offered a bribe before and uh, government official one couldn't answer. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, then, okay. Right, right, right. I'll, I'll get back and scrutinize some of your messages properly before I share them. All right. Now, uh, once again, I think I can start with you, Bobby. Um, what you are listening to and hearing about the Galamsey operation. Um, some say those at the forefront are letting the president down mm -hmm. uh, very badly. Mm -hmm. uh, there are party people who have actually come forward to say, uh, among other things, that in respect of this matter, mm. the president is absolutely not mm. in control mm. of anything. Mm. That's why we are hearing about mm. the rot. Mm. In the course of the week, a lot has come out. Mm. Um, how do you assess what has gone on, and what does it make you feel mm. about the fight? Mm. 
Something it's it's um, an uncomfortable scenario of saying that the king is naked. That is how I see it. You see, for a man as Nana Dodanko Akufado to say that he is putting his presidency on the line, if he doesn't win the fight against Galamse, he didn't say corruption. Galamse tells you how personal, for lack of a better word, he took that fight. Mm. Now, before this event or this evidence that has come out, one of the people that you will never expect to compromise his integrity on any form, any level, was Professor Boateng. This is somebody who left his well-earning income to come to Ghana to do this. But from the video, and they've not come out to deny the video that was played, you cannot you make any objective analysis without concluding that if, even if he did not personally partook in what happened, he knew of it and he didn't stop it. Okay, so Bobby is talking about a video that has been circulating, um, allegedly recorded by the suspended vice chairman of the party, regional vice chairman of the party, that's Echo Ewusi, um, who is head in that video, as we are told, in an interaction with someone who sounds like Professor Frimpong Boateng. It's not been discredited by him so far, mm -hmm. and people have taken it that it is without any objection. He, he cannot say otherwise that it is not him. And he tells stories, including that Professor Boateng, who is chairman of the Interministerial Committee against this uh, Galamse, had actually asked him to do a number of things, including set up a committee of sorts. Um, some of these uh, excavators were supposed to be used, as it were, to get into some form of mining to generate money for the NPP party. And you, he's heard that voice sounding like him, his head, saying, but you didn't come back to report to me that you have actually formed a committee. Mm. Then he suggests that we brought money mm. uh, that your son also did one, two, or the other. Then they mention party executives as being complicit in the whole business. Mm. And this is the guy who has been arrested by the police, among six persons so far uh, said to be arrested. Mm. Okay, so you can Thank go you on. for mm. that. So what, what I'm saying is that I feel sad for the president, because uh, like you have said, it's been suggested, he, he, he seems to have unfortunately lost control over this. And I don't think it was, he expected that the people that he had put in charge would let him down this, this much. It's, I'm worried because, you see, Galamse is not an MPP or NDC fight. It's a fight to save Ghana. Mm -hmm. It's a fight to save our environment. Right. It doesn't matter whether you live in Accra or you live in Boko. If our river, the water bodies, that constitute 70% of the year, mm. our portion is, is, goes bad. Our very existence as a country is, is threatened. And so if a government has set up, a, and I don't think any president or any right-meaning Ghanaian of what, whatever political tradition mm. would say that I support Galamse. I don't think so. So this is a national fight. And if the people that were put in charge have seen it rather as an opportunity to make more money for a selected few, then we should take it very seriously. My only disappointment is that there were signs on the wall long ago that there was something problematic with this fight. Mm. Long ago. Mm. And the MPP kept spinning it. Now, I had Mr. Boabian Samoa, the secretary, of the MPP, saying that as far as he is concerned, the integrity of Professor Boateng is intact. <laughs> I heard him on TV. Yeah, right. That is intact. He's done nothing wrong. And that is why I sit back and say that what? It means that it because he speaks for the party as a general secretary. Mm -hmm. oh, but, no, no, no. While, Director sorry. of communication, sorry. Whilst he was doing that, the NDC's communication wing, also led by Sami Jemfi, also clearly indicted Professor Boateng directly. And even their caucus in parliament, uh, led by Muta Wakil, mm. also spoke and said Professor Boateng is the first to be arrested. He should not be the one, as we understand, mm. 
asking that Somebody other people should be, be arrested. arrested. Well, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't want to go into the way the politicians have taken it. Mm. But I want to look at it as it is. That once the, somebody who speaks for the ruling government, mm. that Professor Boateng is the minister of, comes to say that Professor Boateng's integrity is intact, then he goes to suggest that they indeed, at that level, and that is what I find disheartening, were aware of what was happening and they decided to look away from it. You see, there are people within the government, in fact, at the presidency, mm -hmm. who have publicly asked that Professor Boateng say that he has failed and that he should be, his uh, committee should be dissolved. Well, it doesn't go to the extent of saying that he himself should be made to face charges. The, the, like I said, the signs were on the wall, mm. right from the expose. <laughs> I think it was Bayana. Right. When the person who was originally the chairperson. The secretary. secretary. He was only the Mr. secretary, Bishop. not the. Yeah, yeah he was. Ah, only he was the, the oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. The secretary. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think Mr. Ekwewusi was his deputy. So the secretary was caught on tape, mm -hmm. which the investigative bodies refused to investigate, or they said that they had investigated and they didn't find any need to prosecute him. But since then, I, mean, I don't think still, I don't think they have a conclusion yet. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The police cleared him. Yeah. So yeah. And then Mr. Amidu said, okay. no, 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 so no. So the police cleared him. Mm -hmm. They are waiting for Mr. Amidu's conclusion. Yes. But I have not. Since then, I have not heard him, the the secretary or former mm -hmm. Mr. Bishu, mm -hmm. actively participating in this fight. I have not. And so it seems to suggest mm -hmm. that his role was now taken by Mr. Wusi. It seems to suggest mm -hmm. who was his deputy at that time, and this is where Mr. Wusi has brought us. If you, he, if you listen to mm -hmm. members of the Vanguard, we started with a Vanguard team of 400. Mm -hmm. And then that Vanguard team is the one you saw a public display mm -hmm. of, inaugurated by the president or the defense minister mm -hmm. to do this mm -hmm. uh, job. If you listen to them, it does appear they and the other group, which is the Gallam Stop, mm -hmm which we understand was set up by the minister, they seem to have Clash. to be, yeah, Conflict. to be clashing. Mm. And it does appear that the Ekoewusi actually has control over the Gallam yeah. stop and not the Vanga team. Because and it is the Gallam stop that's been supposed to be taking the excavators, SUVs, and other trucks that they seize into custody. Mm. Mm -hmm. and somehow they don't get to the particular mm -hmm. custodies that well, they're they are supposed, supposed to get to. to. Yeah. I, I also started getting worried when there was a news item of some of these excavators being bent. Mm -hmm. And that is when I said, one, the law does not say it should be bent. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it may be an opportunity for them to say we have bent all. <laughs> <laughs> because we see it in this country. When mm -hmm. they bend one, mm -hmm. I mean, when there's a flame, mm -hmm. how would you know the quantity or the volume? Mm -hmm. that, then I started thinking that there may be something wrong. It was just a matter of time. Mm. It also goes to see or goes to bring back to fore the problem of our political f uh, 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 funding of political parties. Because that is the justification, well, as of now, in the video. Alleged. Alleged mm. for what they did. And when you hear some of the MPP bigwigs who have said that they have complained from day one that the election of this same gentleman to the high office of deputy regional chairman. And that all that the electorate say that he's the one who was able to provide them with, there, there's a, a letter, I don't know whether it is true or not, by a member of parliament within the region who said the guy has bought 300 cars, he has done this, he sponsored the party. As it stands now, he had even gone far to give money to certain aspiring MPs in, what, uh, is it the, the constituencies that when you are not an MP, they, they, they have an orphan. orphan constituencies mm -hmm. to boost the campaign and so the president should ensure that he's left off the hook. Mm -hmm. Now, as we stand now, there's a, the, what I also find particularly interesting is the statement issued by the police. And you see the statement. Six persons have been whatever. Yeah, arrested. Arrested in connection with, and the statement has a part. That says that they have been cautioned. You don't, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. <laughs> if, I was, if you see, this yes. Is if you, if you read, what does, what does, what does he, I have it here. What yes. does it mean 
What does it mean when they uh, say they have the been cautious? The statement itself. Caution, and that's part of the mm. investigation. That so is they what I mean. Finish. No, mm. but it says that mm. they have been cautioned. Mm. So and they're then, taking their state caution statement and, then, and are still investigating. No, Please. and it, it concluded that they are still in police custody. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if my, that, but, my memory of it was right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That they have been cautioned. But I think they've subsequently granted them bail. Yes, which and is still, rightly yes, done. Yes. But let's go into the substance. So, and no, no, it goes, yes. So it mm -hmm. goes to say that if nothing comes out of such investigation, mm -hmm. criminally, mm -hmm. then, and there seems to be political pressure on the powers that be mm -hmm. to make sure that these guys are not prosecuted. Now, these excavators are owned by human, sorry, Ghanaian citizens mm -hmm. or people who were doing business in Ghana, mm -hmm. whether lawfully or unlawfully. Mm -hmm. But as you said, the law states that if these excavators are seized, they should be applied to the benefit of the state. Mm. That has not been done. Okay. Is that causing financial <laughs> loss to the state if you stretch it? Yes. The people who have lost these excavators, would they have a cause of action against whoever took them and did not apply it to you know, where they were supposed to have been done? Yes, yeah, well, uh, as a date, mm. I, would not say, I would say that we, we seem to have lost the fight against Galante because it wasn't a fight at all. I see. Um, the it police statement not. said that um, they had arrested six persons over missing excavators and other equipment seized by operatives of Operation Vanguard. Suspect Eko Wusi, who was, contacted, who was contracted to take custody of the seized equipment, was arrested on Monday, February 2, 2020, at Ablenk Bay in Accra, together with five other accomplices, namely Frederick Ewusi, Joel Asamoah, Adnan Haruna, Frank Jan, and Joe Ahen. Eko Ewusi, Frederick Ewusi, and Joel Asamoah have been cautioned on the offense of stealing, while Adnan Haruna, Frank um, Jan, and John Ahen have been cautioned on the offense of abetment of stealing. Mm -hmm. All suspects are in police custody. Mm -hmm. The public is assured that due processes will be followed. Yeah. Um, right. Stealing no, is not the right charge. That was what I was coming to. Uh, okay, but that's the yeah. initial process. They may, you never know mm -hmm. how right, where they will end. Now, what were you thinking? That they should charge them for what? I think there should be a start of fraudulent breach of trust. Fraudulent breach of tra yes. trust. Yes. How do you explain that? They were in public office. They were given custody of public. Because if you say stealing, you would have taken the thing from the owner. Mm. Government at that stage is not the owner of the excavators. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, because okay. the court hasn't ordered, ordered court. that. Exactly. But you mm. took it from the owner, ostensibly in, no, in performing, in performing uh -huh. yes, a so public right. duty. Yeah. Okay. So then you wouldn't have stolen it from the owner. So this is a wrong charge. That is what I think at this stage. Some, and if they pursue this only, they may get they may get off. That is exactly what I was saying. Okay. That, you know, they were put in 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 trust mm. on behalf of the state. They didn't steal. They didn't steal. Okay. Oh, but there are circumstances where sometimes you take it like this and it amounts to. So Fraudulent. yes, as for the fraudulent trust, you, you have the you case, have given him charge of the thing. Yes. yes. He should transport it from one mm -hmm. place mm -hmm. to the next. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then, and then he diverts it. He diverts it. Yes, there is this That's case. stealing. Yes, there is this case. Uh, is it what the chamber of mind? Okay. We used it some months right. ago. It's in the mental All right. Okay. okay. Yes. yes. But that's that's, that's Martin. Case. That's okay. Martin Pebble yes. for you. <laughs> <laughs> the perspective. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, I'll take a quick break here. When we return, mm -hmm. um, just as you take it from the point where we are now learning that it's not just excavators we are talking about. In fact, there's one individual who claims that over 50 of his, his excavators were taken away. And we are told that uh, one excavator could cost as much as uh, 500,000 mm -hmm. or so. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. Yeah. So it's about 100,000, between 80,000 and 100,000 dollars. Yeah. 80,000 and 100,000 yeah. dollars. Which is uh, the 500,000. Yeah. Okay. Depending on the make. Yeah. All right. The and they, ones are the they've ones taken in over, over 50 of them from one individual. Mm -hmm. Um, his vehicles, you know, SUVs, all of them taking. Mm -hmm. And we are now being told also about gold. In fact, gold that they seized mm -hmm. in the course of their operations. Mm -hmm. Where is all of that? Mm -hmm. Where has it gone to? All right, we'll be right back.
You're welcome back. This is News File, it's your most authoritative news analysis platform. And here on News File, we put Ghana first. So my question was to you. Um, those people, they are all about the place. They are giving interviews all over the place, complaining about their gold, their other vehicles, not only excavators. Um, how does that make you feel and what should they be doing? Well, Samson, to be honest with you, I am very disappointed in the state of affairs now. The reason for this is that I have been an advocate for us to have a very good environment. I had the opportunity somewhere 2011, 2010, 20, I think 2011, of seeing the damage caused by Galante in the Amansea East and West areas. Mm. And I spoke to an old lady who at the time told me that, look, my son, life is very difficult for us because what used to be farm lands for them, where they could walk to easily, have all been destroyed because of Galante. And now before she can get to her farm, she has to go through another community, go th through a vehicle. So it's like, if you have to go through, let's say, here and circle, mm -hmm. which is very close. Now they probably have to go towards Achimota, La Paz, mm -hmm. and come through Kanesha or something. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they are not able to farm effectively. And I said, why don't you go along where these things are? I said, no. They've done a lot of pits such that people go, they fall in, and they die, and nobody hears of them. Mm -hmm. I looked at the general environment, and I said, goodness, this has to stop somewhere. So when this campaign came, fast forward, I saw what was happening to the pride and all this. Mm. So when this campaign came, some of us were really happy about it. Now, it looks like, like Bobby said, it's now a lost battle. The no, initial, no battle. <laughs> the initial bits, I, I think the initial bits was good because our water bodies and all that, we all had evidence that, look, mm. they were beginning to get back to normal. Now suddenly, this so-called community approach to mining comes in, which for me is probably next to Galamse in its own right. We know the difference between Galamse and regulated mining. We know, as lawyers, we know. But in the practical bit of it, once the people know that there's some community, whatever, beyond those who have been properly licensed, others will also join the free. Now we have a situation where we have Vanguard and Galamstop. Mm. We are not too sure who is taking the inventory and who is in possession of what. There's been accusations from both ends. Now, individuals have also come out to say that beyond the excavators, we've lost our vehicles, as in regular SUVs, saloon vehicles. We've lost gold because at the time we were arrested, we had in our possession some gold ore and what have you. And all these things were taken from us. Nobody is accounting for these things. But the basic question is, do we respect the laws that we put together as a people? Because we have the Minerals and Mining Amendment Act 2015. That spells out that when these things happen and you seize whatever, be it an equipment, a product, whatever, you need to keep it with the police. Custody of the seized items must be with the police. Now I'm asking myself, do we have any inventory at all? Mm. And can the police service come out to tell us that, well, these are the things that have brought to us in accordance with the law, and that this is the inventory we have? I'm saying this because we seem to have a situation where we have been given different numbers in terms of the excavators. In one bread, it's about 600, in one bread, 500, in one bread, 200, and whatever. Now, the various places that these equipments were cut and taken to, who was in charge of them at a point where these items were deposited? Mm -hmm. And in the course of transporting them, who ensured that all these things were done properly? We've had issues of tracking devices that have enabled some of the miners who lost these things to now trace that their equipment are in other locations. They follow up 
and it's still doing some mining activity. Mm -hmm. Clearly, there, there's something amiss. Mm -hmm. And I think that the earlier we look at this dual activity happening, Gallam Top and Vanguard, such that the overlaps and the distortions are all smoothing, the better for all of us. But I think that once the president made a promise to us that he is ready to put his presidency on the line, this is the time that that commitment should come to the fore. Mm. I think that what is beginning to happen, what is we are all hearing, for example, in the Western region, it is very difficult for people to get water now. And if you listen to the Ghana Water Company, they are actually attributing this impact to Galamse. Mm. They understand that the dry season is also a factor, but they are saying that Galamse is making the water so terrible that they even have to spend so much and a lot more time to be able to purify. And now people cannot get water as well. Basically, we are threatening our basic existence as a mm -hmm. people. Mm. Water, as they say, is life. And these are all parts of the effects of Galamse. I think that the president should quickly put his acts together by bringing all the parties in. Let us have a very comprehensive and well-detailed information as to what has happened as far as this fight is concerned. Mm. Let's not shield people. Let's come clear and say that, look, this is where we have erred or this is where things were not applied properly. Because if we cannot respect the basic law, that tells us where we should keep them. Mm. I mean, if all these were kept to the police, we could be asking the IGP to give us responses. But clearly, the law was breached. The seized equipment, the products That's were not That's why Mutawakilu says that you have been given a job, mm -hmm. and the law directs you as to how to do the job. Mm -hmm. If you seize equipment, they are evidence of crime. So keep them with the police so that when they are prosecuting, they may need to use this evidence. So the first person to fall, according to the minority, is the, 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 the professor. Well, you see, I agree that this is the situation. So clearly, the law has not been respected. It is clear from the Minerals, Minerals and Mine Amendment Act. If you go and you to, just said yes. the reason there it, have been the diversions there. is because we didn't put them at proper Look, custody. Even in terms of allocation, mm. it can only be done after the person has been convicted and the court, as the law requires, mm. had given an order that there should be forfeiture and mm. then allocated to a specific mm. institution of mm. state. It doesn't give room for people to go about selling anything. Some affected persons have spoken to us and they say that there have even been court orders mm -hmm. directed at these people who are keeping the um, machines mm -hmm. to release them mm -hmm. to them, and the they don't seem to want to respect even the court orders. Mm -hmm. They are powerful. <laughs> I mean, then, then, then there is more or less a state of impunity at this point. Mm -hmm. Because if we refuse, as in quote, government officials or people connected to the public service to obey the courts based on lawful orders that have been given, which have not been set aside, then I don't know what else we want to do to ourselves now. Mm. I think the president should bring all his national to the fore and ensure that this Galamse fight is not lost. Because clearly at this point, we are in disarray and we may be losing it completely. And if we lose well, it now, I don't mm. know when we can get that commitment and initiative to be able to get to where we were probably a year or so ago. By, by the time the ban on small-scale mining was being lifted um, sometime in August thereabouts mm. or September 2018. The ban was placed in April mm -hmm. of 2017. Mm -hmm. By the time it was placed for six months, but later it was extended. Mm -hmm. By the time it was being lifted, they had arrested illegal miners, over 1,300 of them, and only 10% were facing prosecution. Does that give you a sign of what has happened over the period, particularly okay. now that you know mm -hmm. the the media coalition that had its eye on the process took sort of you know stop following and monitoring the process? Yes, yes, because you know even from day one, as soon as the ban was placed, it came out that look, uh, we had at least 
three uh, million Ghanaians affected because you see they, they have to use a multiply effect. You just don't look at the number of persons involved mm. in Galamse, but you do a multiplier. That's you multiply by the average number of uh, uh, persons in a family. And so some experts said at least about three million people being affected. So straight away, what it, it, it signaled was that these are political votes. They are, these are persons who p potentially could vote for the government or vote against it. So you see that from day one, there had always been a strong political, uh, this, uh, uh, what do you call it, an, an undertone to this uh, Galamse fight. So to the extent that you don't find, I, I'm not surprised that you don't find many persons being prosecuted because if, if, if that were so, if they prosecuted almost all of them, <laughs> then you'll be sure that the government will be kicking itself out of office. Yeah, I so saw a, co a coordinator of the team, of a the coordinator office. of the team, told us here about three weeks ago when we were discussing the same issue, that part of their problem is political influence, politicians yes. in the process. Yes. What What does that tell you about what we have heard in that video that was referred to? Even mm -hmm. though we have heard um, the name of the person who was mentioned as the one whose concession was going to be used. Yeah you know, to mine and to generate money yeah, for the party. Exactly. We have heard him say that mm -hmm. it was to be small-scale mining, not mm -hmm. illegal mining. Yeah. Well, you see, Sam, this one's naturally, when there's such a huge accusation, it's to be expected that there will be denials and all that. But the video speaks for itself, and mm -hmm. we all can make sense of it for ourselves, okay? So bottom line is that in all of this, because votes are at stake, and the votes could tilt the elections one way or another, <laughs> these are the things that will naturally happen. Mm. So the solution is for you, the media, I think, Ben Avlenko, you guys right. started their campaign. So just yeah. make sure that you are back in the saddle and keep mm. pushing. I'm sure the president will listen, because he's already said that, look, he will put his presidency mm. on the line mm. for this campaign. So, okay. and I'm happy during this week, that tip was played over and over and right. on a number of media okay. outlets. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we ran out of time. Uh, my guests have been Martin Pebu, um, Dr. Justice Youngson, and Bobby Bunsen. Earlier, uh, we had an interview with the finance minister, uh, Mr. Ufariata. Have a good afternoon. My name is Samson Ladi Anyanini.